Good morning, Philippines. Uh, kamusta po tayong lahat? Buhay po pa po ba tayo? Uh, parang demokrasya lang <laughs> dito sa bansa po natin. And to all our viewers, of course, uh, from all over the globe, right now here on Zoom, there are 269 participants, but I'm told that there are many more watching on uh, YouTube and Facebook. So uh, good morning, magandang umaga, buenas dias, uh, good afternoon, magandang hapon, uh, buenas tardes, at uh, magandang gabi po sa inyo, uh, good evening, at buenas noches uh, sa inyo pong lahat, at maayong, <laughs> maayong aga, dagdag na natin po yung ilonggo, maayong aga sa inyo tanan uh, to everyone joining us this morning. Many, of course, are wondering uh, how uh, political campaigns would be waged uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic. It is a public health crisis of a crisis proportions uh, that has severely limited um, all our social, political, and economic activities. And there was a time uh, not long ago, I wonder if you remember this, na ang paggamit ng alcohol, hindi po yung alcohol, ah, yung eto, ganto, alcohol sa kampanya, was frowned upon and who knew that uh, meta pandemia tayo ngayon ang sabi nga eh kung yung world war 2 ay eh, yung life defining moment for our parents or our grandparents generations this uh, pandemic is our generation's life defining moment and that is why in this webinar we are talking about how uh, seasoned campaign handlers and members of the academe uh, are going to discuss how this pandemic has uh, prompted or has forced uh, adjustments and adaptation of the uh, traditional election campaigning, which, by the way, elections and politics, siempre, uh, favorite Pinoy pastime yan. So welcome, everyone, to this third installment of the National Forum on Communication and Democracy, Philippine Elections 2022. Kanya kanyang diskarte, campaign dynamics during the pandemic. I am Pia Ontiveros. Uh, 32 years na po akong nagpapanggap <laughs> or nagtatrabaho bilang isang journalist. Uh, 22 of the, uh, the first 22 of those years na sa ABS-CBN at ANC po ako and uh, the last 11 to 12 years uh, CNN Philippines which used to go by other names before. And I will serve as your host and moderator for today's program. Uh, this, uh, like I said, no, can also be viewed via live streaming on YouTube and uh, on the uh, TVUP channel as well as on the TVUP and the Philippines Communication Society Facebook page. We also have some live tweeting. So, syempre, dalo na yung mga uh, ka-generation ko, yung mga bata dito no, na watching us today. Uh, we know you like to tweet. Uh, so, please, uh, when you tweet, when you do live tweeting, please use the hashtag PCS Forum Series for all your posts. Now, before we begin, let's acknowledge the following. Uh, we'd like to thank the University of the Philippine System the Office of the Vice President for Public Affairs, the Philippines Communication Society, UP Information Technology Development Center, TVUP, the Internet Television Network of the University of the Philippines, and everyone who has helped to make this forum series possible. And because we have plenty of uh, faculty and students watching us today, uh, PCS members who have watched at least 50% or half of the webinar duration will be receiving, sorry, not an A, uh, sorry, yun, yun kasi ang grading system namin sa Ateneo. Eh. Pero sa, sa UP, di ba, one? One ba yung pinakamataas? Hindi ko alam. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, so fake news po yun, ha? hindi A or one ang grade nyo. Uh, what you will get is a certificate of attendance as a, a benefit of uh, your PCS membership. Uh, so ngayon alam po ninyo ha, yung fake news, you can spot it when it's too good or too impossible to be true. Now, if you have not applied for or renewed your membership yet, this is your chance to be part of this premier organization that represents the communication discipline to the Philippine Social Science Council. The online membership form is available on the PCS website, philscomsoc.org slash membership. <clears throat> and because this is a national forum on communication and democracy, uh, we uh, yes, of course, it, it's true. No, uh, Last time we checked, the Philippines is still a democracy. We want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to be heard. So we will be using Mentimeter so that our viewers on Facebook and YouTube will also be able to participate. We encourage everyone to uh, join us in our mini quiz. Madali lang po ito. Uh, so, sasali po kayo ha, 
Uh, kahit hindi po kayo nag-review, okay lang. Uh, pwede naman mambola. No, I'm just kidding. Huwag kayo mambola. <laughs> be honest with your answers. Because your answers will be discussed uh, during our panel discussion later on and you will see how the other viewers have answered. Ang, ang uh, pakiusap lang po namin, walang kopyahan ha, sa sagot. So, uh, again, for all our viewers included, uh, including those on Facebook and YouTube, so please open your browser, go to menti.com, Mama Echo November Tango India.com, Charlie Oscar Mama, and fill in the Menti code 2102-9900 or simply scan the QR code on your screen. Yung mga bata alam, alam yan ha, how to, to scan QR code. Ako, marunong din ako nun. Now, Okay, I apologize. I know I talk too much, no? So, and I know you're all excited to get this going. Uh, wow, 345 participants here on Zoom alone, and I don't even know yet how many we are on Facebook and YouTube. But uh, to set the tone first for this uh, Kanya Kanyang Discarte campaign dynamics during the pandemic, let's hear a few words from the president of the FEU NRMF, Attorney Antonio H. Abad Jr., Attorney Tony Abad. Magandang umaga po sa inyo, Attorney Tony Abad. Uh, but before you begin your formal opening remarks, sir, I just wanted to ask you a quick question. Uh, as a lawyer and president of a teaching hospital, can you briefly tell us about this very delicate balancing act between the need for public health protection and the guaranteeing our civil liberties during these coming elections, sir? Yes, uh, I see the importance of striking a delicate balance between public health and the guarantee for exercising our civic liberties. Public health should never be sacrificed when engaging in election-related activities, such as the political campaigns. We must take pains to adapt traditional campaigns so that they will not turn into super spreader events. Well, Attorney Abad, uh, I think our audience uh, is uh, very ready to hear your opening remarks and thank you for that reminder. Very, very important reminder. Okay. Attorney Tony Abad, please go ahead with your brief message, sir. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the COVID-19 pandemic has placed a dreadful disorder on our electoral democracy. I'm sure that all of us are going to witness the drastic difficulties of the forthcoming campaign dynamics of our election, this coming 2022. The COVID-19 pandemic has altered and radically made different the manner of conducting public life. This pandemic is a devastation that can wreck our election process. As a consequence of this pandemic, our government has enforced periodic lockdown, social distancing, and fully operational alert level system for Metro Manila and all regions of the country. This is going to affect tremendously the interaction between the candidates and the voters, political rallies, social events by candidates, and door-to-door -door canvassing, which are our traditional manner of campaigning can hardly be done at this time. Campaigns of this nature, which are opportunities for political parties and candidates to spread their ideas, may no longer be conducted as it might spread the COVID-19 virus. Due to limitations on traditional campaigning by government restrictions, the political parties and candidates for local or national office have to be creative in order to campaign. They have to find ways through social media and through other creative outlets. In this connection, perhaps what the political parties and the candidates can do is to use short message services, SMS, the use of SMS or texting, including option for live chat between a political party or candidate and potential voters are being done already in many parts of the world, in Sub-Saharan Africa, in the Middle East and North Africa, in Latin America, and in Asia Pacific. Hence, we can also do it here. Aside from SMS, the empowered political parties and rich candidates can use television, radio talk shows, political advertising, and newspapers to reach their constituencies. There may even vehicles, use vehicles, fitted 
with loudspeakers for campaigning and broadcasting messages and promises to the people. The political parties and candidates may even resort to video conferencing via Zoom, Teams, or Google Meet. I'm thinking of doing all this as a result of the restrictions for the electoral campaigning during the pandemic. However, the balancing between public health protection and democratic discussion and contestation is very important. Some adoption of the electoral process of the government may be needed to preserve human life, given the known risk. However, freedom of expression is crucial to campaigning and the ability of ideas and information to flow during the electoral process should be restricted as minimally as possible. I'm glad that we are discussing the difficulties of the campaign dynamics during this pandemic. Discussion of this nature is enlightening and necessary in a democratic society. However, such engagement should not descend, if possible, to personalities or ad hominem. And that is what we ought to do. Thank you. At mabuhay at maraming salamat sa inyo lahat. Thank you so much for your very inspiring message, Attorney Tony Abad. Uh, it's very good to hear all those reminders. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, we may all sound like broken records, but we need to keep hearing that over and over again. We look forward, sir, to having you uh, on the panel discussion and the Q&A session later on in the program. Um, and I just wanted to very quickly, uh, and I know I cannot read all of them, no, but uh, people have been saying where they're, where they're watching from, Lemri, Batangas, Pasig, Calamba, Laguna, Binalon, and Pangasinan, Tai Tai Rizal, Santa Maria Bulacan, Quezon City, Cagayan Valley, we hope you're okay there, um, uh, Cavite, uh, Cebu, Angono Rizal, Tondo, Manila, Iloilo, Lipa, Batangas, Pampanga, etc. Um, many students also signing in from very uh, from many different universities. Pamandasan ng Lungsod ng Manila, PLM, my own alma mater, Ateneo de Manila, University of Makati, University of Southern Mindanao. Marami pa po, ang dami po natin ngayon dito sa Zoom. 391, but I'm told marami pa pong mga nasa YouTube and Facebook na nanonood. But right now, it is time for our mini quiz. So, uh, you may please start answering the Mentimeter poll on your screen. So go to menti.com or you can see it right now on your screen and fill in the Menti code 21029900. The first question, kung walang face-to-face -face campaigning, ano ang inyong primary source of information tungkol sa mga kandidato? So you can only choose one. So the first is traditional media, TV, radio, newspaper. Sasabi ko saan, parang awan nyo na choose traditional media, pero... Uh, the second one is online media websites, YouTube uh, news websites. Uh, the third one is social media websites, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and blogs, uh, messaging apps like Messenger and Viber, word of mouth, family, friends, relatives, and institutions, church, barangay, school. Right now, ang pinakamataas is social media with 44, 45 uh, votes, votes or uh, answers already. Tapos pumapangalawa ang online media with 31 and 24 traditional media. At apat lang ang word of mouth. Yung word of mouth, ano ba yun? Chismis ba yun? Anyway, um, the second question is, on your Mentimeter poll pa rin, what campaign issues are important to you? So para sa katanungan ito, eh, pwede po kayong mag-input no, ng tatlong uh, issues para sa ating word cloud. So you're, you're going to see the words that will increase in size in proportion to the number of people who have answered that same issue as you. So ayan, we can see some answers coming in already. And right now, it's uh, the biggest uh, words are uh, corruption, education, economy, public health, uh, etc. Now, uh, of course, throughout the program you can you can still answer that no but we will leave the and like we said no we leave this mentimeter poll open for you uh and then it reveal po natin later ano po yung mga uh, kasagutan uh later with our speakers wala naman pong uh, uh, uh right minus wrong dito uh, i know on social media young people like to say wrong answers only wrong wrong answer is wrong ha huh? so as we're hearing from our viewers let's now hear the word on the street uh, with the person on the street interview 
with TVUP wrote this. Mahalagang mahalaga ang pangampanya kasi ito ang paraan ng pagpapaabot ng mensahe at impormasyon. Ito yung kanilang paraan para makilasil ng mga tao. Tapos para malaman din ng tao kung ano yung, uh, yung mga proyekto nila. Ito yung time na um, papatunayan ng mga kandidato na sila yung karapat-dapat para sa mga boto. I think it's important especially in these trying times, yung pagkakampanya because it's a fundamental element of our electoral process. Dito natin mas makikita or mas makikilala yung mga kakandidato sa ating bansa because these electorates are actually the ones who are going to pass the laws na meron tayo. So it is important for us to know them better. This is going to be the first election that we have um, during the pandemic when there are lockdowns everywhere. I think that given that there are restrictions in status quo, I'd rather watch the campaigns through an online setup. We have Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, pati yung mga television shows din natin ngayon. Nasa ano na sila eh. Nasa YouTube na rin eh. Naka, naka live streaming na. Gusto ko rin sana maging universal yung access, hindi lang sa social media, um, yung magiging information tungkol sa mga tatakwang kandidato. For the benefit of other people who do not have access to social media, or, or if they do have access to social media, I think that is also full of mis- and disinformation. Hindi lahat ng nakukuha natin sa social media accurate. Alam naman natin na yung social media, meron siya algorithm na ipapakita lang niya sa'yo kung ano yung gusto mo. So I think that it's better if we could also hold uh, more campaign activities in true local and national televisions. Sana magkaroon tayo ng face-to-face -face na campaign if papayagan ng mga community protocols natin. Because it is important also for us to connect with the candidates that we have in a face-to-face -face interaction. Hindi lang dapat puro tayo social media even though we can use it and maximize it in times of the pandemic. Maganda kung magkakaroon ng parang town hall sessions kung saan makakapagtanong ka, mas makaklarify mo yung mga plano nila. Um, one thing that we can do as a voter in the upcoming elections in 2022 to know more better about the electoral candidates is to look for their stands. At doon natin makikilatis yung kung ano yung mga gawain nila na nakaangkla sa segbisyon pang publiko. Um, dapat talaga mag-research mag bago bumoto. Yun talaga, parang research bago boto. So, para mag-research mag-isa, pwede kong tignan yung history na kanilang mga nagawa na kung dati silang politiko. O kaya, basahin mismo yung kanilang platforma. Ako, personally, I feel empowered na makakapag-participate ako um, in this democratic process. The election for 2022 is something personal. This is something which will affect you directly because whoever will sit in those positions are the people who will create the reforms which will affect your life, affect our country. Panawa na at oras na para tumindig, para suportahan yung mga magdadala at magkatagulit para sa ipangunlad natin. Never lose hope. Like Change is still something that we can achieve once you start participating. Thank you very much, TVUP, for giving us a glimpse of uh, the sentiments of the masses, uh, many of them, of course, young people. To start off, we have with us a uh, professor and former chair of the Department of Political Science at UP Diliman, Dr. Maria Ella Atienza. Dr. Ella, uh, good morning. Uh, and it is uh, the, uh, it is the Pinoy thing to do to ask, uh, how are you related to kaano-ano po ninyo si Lito Atienza na running mate ngayon ni Manny Pacquiao? I'm sure hindi po kayo related. Uh, hello, Pia, and good morning sa lahat ng nasa uh, Pilipinas. And hello to everyone uh, watching outside the Philippines. Hindi po kami magkamag-anak ni Congressman Lito Atienza. Magka-apilido po kami. <laughs> Well, Dr. Atienza, before you begin your uh, formal presentation, uh, you know, we've seen in this election cycle candidates who've uh, switched political parties, created their own political parties, or resurrected long dead uh, parties, no? or ha have been adopted as guest candidate by uh, any of these political parties. From your, through your political science lens, Dr. Ella, can you briefly tell us why Filipino politicians have this tendency to be a uh, 
uh, balimbing with all due respect to the balim balimbing, or sometimes they're called political butterflies, again, with all due respect to the butterflies, Dr. Atienza. Salamat niya sa tanong. Ah. Totoo, ah, yung tawag nga natin, uh, sig siguro mas ano, neutral, turncoats para hindi balimbing, di ba? Uh, Palipat-lipat. Uh, nangyayari yan kasi sa observation din namin, uh, hindi kasi matibay yung ating mga political parties. Wala rin tayong mga batas na nagbabawal ng turncoats. Sa ibang bansa kasi, bawal ang magpalipat-lipat ng political parties. May penalty, parang independent ka na lang kung aalis ka sa political parties mo. Mahina rin yung, ano, yung recruitment at uh, retention ng membership ng mga political parties sa Pilipinas. Kaya uh, useful ang political parties pag may election, parang machinery sila, mas madali kung may partido ka kesa sa independent ka pag nagpa-file ka sa COMELEC. Pero walang nagbabawal kasi uh, na magpalipat-lipat. So, mahina ang political parties. Na. At minsan, pare-pareho lang naman talaga sila. Hindi po ba? Oo, ang mga programa ay halos pare-pareho. Nagkakapareho on major issues pero wala namang masyadong ideological differences. Okay, and of course, uh, I wanted to ask you, but then it might take up so much of our time, but there is also an interesting uh, historical explanation as to the word turncoat, but you know, we'll leave that for later on if we have some time. So Dr. Kienza, um, uh, this makes for a very good uh, jump off point for your presentation. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you, Pia, and I'll share my screen. Okay, salamat po. I hope you can see my screen. Ayan. Um, Yes, we can, ma'am. Go ahead. Okay. Maraming salamat sa Philippines Communication Society and TVUP sa invitasyon. Uh, mahirap tanggihan. At sabi ni uh, VP uh, El, um, uh, Nelly Pernia, huwag akong tatanggi. So, but thank you for the invitation. So, uh, I'll be presenting some ideas about campaign dynamics during the pandemic. But as a political scientist, I'll be presenting data and uh, analysis uh, from not only Philippine politics, observations on Philippine politics, but from comparative politics, lessons also from other countries. So um, usually before going into campaigning during the pandemic, um, some uh, media people already asked me in uh, uh, their uh, in, through interviews regarding information about elections. Uh, let me set a context first so, uh, about campaigning during the pandemic. Pero ang usually tinatanong, uh, ano po ba, gano'n ka-importante ang uh, uh, election sa isang uh, sa, sa buhay ng mga, uh, ng mga Pilipino at ng lahat ng mga tao na merong eleksyon. Um, in our discipline, uh, we look at uh, elections, particularly in um, democratic settings. And of course, the Philippines is, this, is still classified as, um, as a democracy. Um, ang elections, meron siyang tinatawag na bottom-up at top-down functions. And sometimes they contradict each other. Pero yun yung nangyayari tuwing may election. And communication uh, processes also happen as elections perform these uh, two sets of functions. So in terms of bottom-up functions, meaning galing sa tao, galing sa ibaba, um, ang eleksyon ang nagiging basihan kung saan nakaka-recruit na mga bagong mga politiko sa ibang uh, sa mula sa baba, mga bagong mukha. Um, pagkakataon din ito kung saan pinipili ng mga tao yung sino yung kakatawan sa kanila sa government. Uh, Lalong-lalo na sa mga uh, kahit presidential yung system natin, we choose who will be heads of uh, elective positions that will be part of uh, government. Of course, we choose our representatives. Um, maraming basihan bakit uh, may mga pinipili tayong representatives, pupunta ako doon. At pagkakataon, ang elections kung saan ang mga bida, ang mga botante, at uh, may pagkakataon kung saan uh, maiimpluensyahan nila sa through communicating various through the campaign period ang mga politiko, ang mga political parties, ano yung mga importanteng issues sa kanila. So, uh, elections influence uh, policy. Uh, but uh, elections also perform top-down functions. Uh, some of these are positive, some uh, negative, yung mga functions ng, ng election uh, na top-down. Of course, uh, what uh, I think uh, what we are doing in this um, 
forum is uh, one way of educating voters. So um, not only political parties, not only politicians, but people concerned about improving the quality of democracy, improving information, parang yun narinig natin sa mga uh, karamihan, mga kabataan kanina sa, sa video, importante ang voters' education kasi importante na tamang informasyon ang basihan nila ng kanilang pagpili. Um, at the same time also, politic the political system and political authorities use uh, elections to build legitimacy, to renew legitimacy uh, in a way that uh, through elections, uh, people in government uh, feel that uh, they have the authority to actually do what their office uh, dictates them to do based on laws and the constitution. But uh, of course, this is happening not only in the Philippines, but in other countries, even countries that are said to be older, more stable uh, democracies. Elections can also help strengthen uh, elites. Uh, parang yung naririnig nating sentimento ng iba na pare-pareho naman yung mga nahahalal galing sila sa isang grupo. Uh, regarding uh, bakit importante yung pag-usapan yung voting behavior at ano yung mga dahilan uh, bakit uh, uh, bumuboto ang mga tao. Uh, kasi importante ito sa campaign uh, strategies. And uh, in political science, there is no single explanation about why voters behave in a certain way. Uh, kasi iba-iba nga ang sektor, iba-iba rin ang socializing agents, katulad na uh, ng kinukonsume na media ng mga, ng mga botante. So um, maraming ano, explanation sa amin sa political science, ano ang nag joke sa mga sa mga uh, botante bakit bumoto merong iba kung malinaw ang uh, ang kanilang uh, membership uh, expression yon ng partisanship nila or identification sa isang political party pwede rin na uh, yung sociological model namin tinatawag uh, bumoboto yung mga tao as a reflection kung saan sila kabilang na grupo. Pwedeng economic, class, or social pos uh, position na kasali sila. So reflection yon ng mga issues na importante sa kanila. Uh, halimbawa, uh, upper class, uh, middle income, lower class, members of indigenous peoples or regional organizations, gender uh, groupings. Pwede rin yung tinatawag naming rational choice model kung saan voters decide their party preference or candidate preference on the basis of personal interest. And then there's such a thing as what we call dominant ideology model kung saan makikita natin na yung mga choices ng mga tao, uh, these are shaped by a process uh, of ideological manipulation or even propaganda and control through various socializing agents. Pwedeng masama dyan ang media, ang mga educational institutions, Sometimes these things happen, particularly in more authoritarian settings, pero nangyayari din with a lot of disinformation. Uh, merong distortion sa flow of political communications by setting the agenda for debate and structuring preferences and sympathies. Uh, other factors that can affect voting behavior and turn out whether pandemic o hindi, yung feeling ng political efficacy when people feel that uh, or they trust the system enough na ang isang boto, it will matter, pwedeng mag magkaroon ng pagbabago. Kung mataas yon mataas ang turnout. Boboto sila. Merong iba, kung alam na ang mananal or atingin nila, uh, pre easily predictable ang results, this can uh, dissuade some people to vote, lalong-lalo na siguro kung pandemic, pero minsan nagkakamali ng prediction. Kaya... Uh, sabi nga nung iba, bumoto pa rin kayo para magkatotoo yung sa tingin na mangyayari. And then, of course, uh, salience ng issues. Pag matitindi ang mga issues yung lumabas kanina, importante yung economy, yung health, governance issues, uh, graph and corruption. Uh, if people feel strongly enough about very important issues uh, sometimes, that pushes them to vote. And yes, the state of the economy definitely affects voting behavior. Um, Philippine elections, briefly, uh, we have a pluralist first-past-the-post system and uh, a, a bastardized version of the party list system. First-past-the-post, parang, parang karera yan. So uh, kahit hindi ka makakuha ng more than 50%, panalo ka kung lamang ka, kahit isang boto. So parang karera lang. 
multi-party system, but as I said earlier, we have weak political parties. Uh, we have more personality-oriented politics. Yun yung nag-shape ng karamihan sa mga campaigns. And then elections based on our assessment that we did last, uh, we published last year. Um, elections in the Philippines, even if it's based on the 1987 constitution stating that elections should be free, competitive, and fair, malayo pa tayo doon kasi hindi pa nagkakaroon ng maraming uh, mechanisms kung saan lahat talaga ay makakaboto ng malaya at uh, lahat ay may pagkakataon kung qualified sila na tumakbo kasi lamang pa rin ang ilang mga uh, uh, ang ilang mga grupo ng tao pag election Generally, we have high voter turnout. Uh, sabi ng iba, this is good. Pero sabi naman ng iba, cynical yung perspective nila dito. Ibig sabihin, Filipinos are voting specialists. Akala nila, ito lang yung pagkakataon kung saan magiging bahagi tayo ng uh, politika. Di ba? Na... Uh, sa panahon lang ng eleksyon, feeling nila bida ang mga botante kasi nililigawan sila ng mga tao. Now, here comes the pandemic. Uh, masalimuot na yung nagiging uh, functions ng election sa modern political systems and there are many reasons, hindi lang iisang dahilan, bakit uh, boboto ang isang tao at sino ang iboboto niya at ano ang partidong iboboto niya. Pero nagkaroon tayo ng pandemic mula uh, last year. Um, Definitely may mga na-postpone na elections pero marami pa rin ang natuloy. Sa data ng International Institute for Democracy and Electoral Accountability, uh, actually many elections uh, were held as scheduled including uh, in Malaysia and South Korea and of course the US. The pandemic itself did not result in automatic lower voter turnout. Uh, elections between February 2020 and September 21, 2021 actually show that turnout increase in 32 countries, including the US, um, Italy, and South uh, Korea during the pandemic, but turnout declined in 58 countries. Um, generally, it's not just because of the pandemic, but the trust in the political system and the protocols that were strictly implemented. Pag mahina or uh, walang trust na may strict implementation of health protocols, then uh, people do not uh, go out or there are um, no alternative opportunities to vote instead of just uh, going to the districts. In terms of campaign, campaigning during the, the pandemic, um, based on the elections in 2020 in other countries, uh, so from a comparative politics perspective, what, the, what are the lessons that we have learned? Uh, uh, we've seen limitations to traditional campaigning, siempre obviously because of government restrictions on movement and public gatherings. Some countries completely banned public gatherings. Yung iba naman naglimit ng number of people who can attend physical gatherings. And then, of course, uh, health protocols were instituted. There were some evidence of violations of restrictions and protocols, pero walang, walang uh, clear indication that holding elections during the pandemic led to, to uh, more infections. Uh, we have seen, and um, Dr. Abad, or Attorney Abad already mentioned this in his opening remarks, the increase in movement to remote campaigns, particularly through social media and other on online platforms. Gamit na gamit na ang Zoom, even in uh, the U.S. Uh, campaigning, pati sa, ano nila, sa, sa mga events nila, pre-election campaigning. They are used as replacement for traditional campaign events and activities, but... Non-digital mechanisms are also here to stay even during uh, the pandemic because there are still areas around the world where sustainable internet pen, uh, penetration is still absent. So what are examples of non-digital mechanisms? Yung SMS, telemarketing, and postal mailings. And of course, the traditional, uh, um, traditional uh, uh, media like TV, newspapers, radio talk shows, and of course, political advertising and uh, uh, while of course kanina dun sa polling uh, many people said many of the participants said through social media particularly facebook nakukuha yung information about candidates um i think yesterday paul asia said that based on their survey uh, among adult um 
Filipinos, TV yung parang number one daw nila. Pero hindi sinabi kung TV na sa regular TV pinapanood or through cable or through the internet, through YouTube. Um, what are the lessons from uh, countries that were able to hold uh, elections uh, freely? Uh, again, echoing some of the remarks of Attorney Abad, there uh, definitely the balance between public health protection and democratic discussion and contestation is an important one. Uh, adaptation and reforms in the electoral process is clearly required to protect human lives. But freedom of expression is crucial to campaigning and the ability of ideas and information to flow during the whole election process should be allowed. So, uh, kailangan talaga ng hindi lang election reforms to allow people to exercise their right to vote and to freely express their ideas, engage with politicians and political parties, but uh, we need to actually be more proactive in allowing people to to participate in campaigns, vote, but at the same time, do things freely and safely. Um, in political science, and this is my, I think my second to the last slide, uh, if um, uh, in business, uh, maybe SWOT analysis is used, uh, we like to use the, the op uh, political opportunity structure, meaning in the face of challenges, you can turn the pandemic which is our number one challenge now, as an opportunity um, in holding the 2022 elections, including the campaign season. Definitely, based on the experience of other countries that were able to hold elections, nandyan pa rin, sabi nga nung iba, nako, lamang yung mga mayayamang mga partido at maraming contributions na mga kandidato. Um, yung uh, mga uh, baka ma, yung mga pandemic activities maging matransform pa into patronage politics but as we can see automatic din ang feedback ngayon ng mga tao parang ayaw nila um, turn off ngayon yung masyadong uh, yung sabi ng iba na mumulitika o masyadong gumagastos uh, kasi parang hindi siya appropriate kahit sinasabi mo na pera yon. Definitely, there are real threats of voting reluctance and possible low voter turnout due to fear of COVID-19, failure of health protocols, and other threats. Um, this happened in other countries, including the, the U.S., uh, the increasing polarization and proliferation of fake news in various media. However, the salience of issues uh, can possibly push for high registration and actual voting. So nakita natin na extend yung, ano, yung, uh, yung uh, registration because of the demand of more people to register. Non-traditional campaigning opportunities are also needed to focus on issues and programs beyond the personality. So holding town halls, whether uh, town, uh, uh, town hall meetings or whether remotely or face-to-face uh, -face, but with limited people, volunteering, uh, it's important to have creative local campaigns, particularly in areas with limited connectivity. So, kailangan mag-provide siguro ng mga giant TVs and generators para mag-participate ang mga tao sa uh, mga uh, media debates and fora. The personal is always political. Uh, it's important in many campaigns now to relate the campaigns of their candidates and their political parties relevant to the personal struggles of people, particularly now during the, the pandemic. You don't start with, uh, iboto mo si ganyan, but you start usually with, kumusta na kayo, paano kayo naapektuhan ng pandemic. And this is where uh, a very important uh, theme of this uh, webinar series, definitely let's take a chance uh, and let's take this as an opportunity to increase the relevance of different media groups academe, interest groups, CSOs, sectoral groups in voters' education, and fact-checking in both social and traditional media. Okay, na pwede natin gawin hindi lang sa panahon ng pandemic, hindi lang sa panahon ng eleksyon, kundi uh, almost every day. And my last slide is... Um, uh, let me inform people that, uh, that the UP Department of Political Science is relaunching our UP Sahalalan project as part of our voter education project. Namana namin to and we're continuing the tradition of the UP system, particularly the Office of the Vice President for Public Affairs. Marami pong salamat.
Marami din pong salamat, Dr. Ella Atienza. Uh, I, I love how you uh, are so direct to the point. Um, in your presentation, like for example, nung, nung dinescribe po ninyo ang partially system as bastardized, <laughs> pag-usapan po natin yan mamaya. At marami pa rin po kayong nasabi na very uh, uh, important to hear. Uh, sometimes kailangan medyo in your face, no? yung mga uh, sinasabi sa atin. And uh, it's also good for, uh, to hear you echoing uh, Attorney Abad's remarks about the very delicate but important balance between uh, public health and freedom of expression. So thank you very much, Dr. Atienza, for that very excellent and comprehensive presentation. Well, let's now hear from the Dean of the School of Government of the Ateneo de Manila, Dr. Ronald Mendoza. Good morning, Dean Mendoza. I'm so glad I'm not the only Atenean here this morning. <laughs> Yes, good morning, Pia. Uh, I'm trying to start my video now. Okay. Yan. Hello. Oh, I love medallion. Medallion. <laughs> yeah, the October medal. Uh, I should send you, send you one. <laughs> You're not wearing it. Magandang umaga po sa lahat. Magandang umaga, Pia. Well, uh, Dr. Mendoza, just a quick question before you begin your uh, formal presentation. Um, you know, it takes a lot of money to finance a nationwide campaign. We already know that, no. But in terms of govern governance, can you briefly, you know, tell us about the challenges of uh, transparency in campaign contributions and expenditures? Merong uh, statement of contributions and expenditures that uh, all candidates are supposed to submit to the COMELEC, no. And in other words, uh, it becomes a public document. Dapat alam natin lahat yan. In other words. Do candidates ever really tell the truth no, when uh, they submit these uh, sources, these statements? Yes, well, I think the, the widespread uh, observation is that the declared spending is uh, slightly under uh, what most people expect candidates actually spend. So parang, parang deflated yung mga reported figures. And, and I think in today's uh, campaign environment na meron pang social media uh, at saka marami ring local uh, activities, uh, you, you, you can expect na marami pang pagkakagastusan ang mga uh, politiko kung mangangampanya sila. And uh, maganda sana kung transparent lahat itong uh, ginastos nila at saka transparent kung sino ang nag-contribute sa kanila. Yun yung mahalaga rin dyan eh. Kasi... Gusto nating malaman na yung magtataguyod ng mga polisiya at reforma natin ay hindi naman nakatali sa mga nagbigay sa kanila ng, uh, ng pera. Well, that sounds like a, a great introduction to your formal presentation, uh, Dean Mendoza. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, Pia. So uh, thank you so much uh, for the chance to speak today. I actually don't have a presentation. I was assured by Dean Pernia that uh, it would just mostly be a Q&A, but let me take this opportunity to uh, share some thoughts uh, after the presentation of Prof. Ella, who's a good friend of mine. Um, Prof. Ella and I have been in uh, uh, pre-election tours for the past three elections, I think, uh, and it's good to see her again uh, with such a nice presentation before mine. So I have a, a, just a little to add. I'm an economist, so I would like to complement the political science uh, analysis by really painting a picture of uh, where we are right now and what are the risks, what are the opportunities. So first is, I think, um, uh, the, the, the big elephant in the room is really the pandemic and how the pandemic might shape these elections. It can shape the elections by increasing turnout for many who believe we deserve better pandemic management. Uh, and, and I believe there are many, many Filipinos who think that um, the pandemic could have been better handled. Kaya pag describe ko yung pandemia, I, I describe it as pandemic mismanagement. Uh, mas, ma, mas mainam sana ang pamamalakad natin kung mas maayos ang pamumuno ng, ng ating bansa at ng ating uh, pandemic management. Uh, ngayon nga, merong usapin ngayon sa Senado na merong pang corruption involved with the tremendous amounts of resources that we threw at the pandemic. So, nung nag-umpisa yung pandemia, ang salita ng mga pinuno natin, ang dami nating pera. Pero sa ngayon, I am sad to report as an economist that our debt-to-GDP ratio has deteriorated significantly and we have thrown a lot of resources into this pandemic with very little to show for it, uh, and especially compared to other countries. 
So mas mainam yung pandemic management ng ibang bansa. Hindi sila uh, bumigat yung kanilang uh, ekonomiya. Hindi, hindi ganitong karami yung nawala ng trabaho. Hindi ganitong karami yung na, nagutom. And so I think the pandemic will surely be uh, a factor to consider and is going to be top of mind, I think, for the coming uh, election. Ang other concern with the pandemic, of course, is yung uh, paano natin poprotektahan ng ating mga botante paglabas nila para bumoto kung ma- maaring uh, natatakot ang marami sa kanila sa pandemia. Uh, and uh, I think uh, si Prof. Tony in the beginning uh, noted na we don't want it to be a super spreader event. Si Prof. Ella naman ay nag assure sa atin uh, looking at international evidence na meron talagang paraan para protektahan ng mga botante kasi maraming mga eleksyon ang natuloy. No? So this is what we're hoping uh, and in fact uh, a small plug on our efforts in Project Participate to work with Comelec and uh, other civil society groups to try and uh, prepare for the elections and COVID-proof the elections. That's sort of our term for it. Uh, if we prepare enough, if we invest in the right things, hindi dapat ma-disenfranchise ang mga Pilipino uh, come May 2022. So kailangan lang paghandaan. Pero napakaigsi na lang nung panahon para maghanda. Um, the government has also promised that uh, it we will be uh, receiving somewhere in the neighborhood of, uh, if I'm correct with these statistics, 80 million vaccines in the next three to four months, which will allow us to vaccinate 70% uh, of the target population. Uh, ito yung theoretical herd immunity uh, target ng maraming uh, scientists. Uh, pero alam naman natin na uh, very delayed yung mga vaccines. Uh, and, and I think there's now a competition for uh, you know, the, the vaccines that are coming out of production worldwide. So merong malaking concern na hindi natin mahit yung target na yan. At this point, our vaccination is somewhere in the neighborhood of 25% of our adult population. Pero paano na yung mga kabataan? Kasi lalabas din naman sila. In fact, ngayon, medyo nag up tayo, lumalabas na rin ang mga bata. Uh, kailangan na rin nilang pumasok sa skwelahan dahil uh, we are actually one of only five countries in the world na hindi pa natin nabubuksan yung skwelahan natin. And so maraming maraming kabataan ang na-force online at hindi naman lahat ng uh, online access ay high quality. So merong maayos yung connection, katulad natin ngayon, uh, napakaganda ng talakayan natin, pero maraming mahina yung connection and therefore uh, one wonders what the quality of the education they receive is. So yan ang isa pang uh, big concern and uh, we're waiting uh, in the next three months whether the government will actually deliver on its target and a lot is riding on it. Kung hindi pa vaccinated ang ma- malaking grupo ng mga Pilipino, syempre magbabago yung, um, yung per- perception natin ng safety uh, in terms of coming out uh, and uh, going out to vote and going out to rejoin the economy. So uh, it's already been mentioned, uh, if we don't get those nice things that actually um, better prepare us for the elections, uh, many things will be forced into online. So yung traditional election uh, campaigning, yung, yung election itself, um, you know, pinag-iisipan natin na ang magdo-dominate this time in 2022 or the run-up to 2022 is yung online. Uh, at nakita natin before may balance yan between the grassroots uh, activities and the online, right? Pero ngayon, ang perception, mas, malaki, mas malakas ang role ng online. Ang tanong ngayon is whether everyone will have good access to online. Alam naman natin nga na hindi pare-pareho. At number two, online is not necessarily uh, just about facts and evidence. As mentioned already by many, ang daming disinformation online at marami ring um, grupo-grupo na kung saan nakakalat yung ganyang klaseng disinformation. So uh, this is still uh, a challenge for our country. In fact, we are referred to by many international observers are, as patient zero in terms of disinformation being used uh, in an election, in a political uh, landscape, in a political setting. So uh, we will again be put to the test. Our democracy will be put to the test in terms of these elections and how resilient our people will be, how resilient our 
democratic process will be to that kind of a disinformation uh, setup. Uh, I, I, I think I've spoken uh, long enough, but let me just conclude with uh, a few really uh, sober facts and figures. Um, NEDA itself predicts that there will be deep scarring in our economy, that we will lose up to 40 trillion pesos, two times the total output of the 2020 GDP of the Philippines uh, in the next um, four years or so. And it will take us uh, at least a decade uh, by their estimates to reclaim our uh, economic growth trajectory, which we lost in 2019. Yung po yung average growth of 6% per year. Now, 6% is a magic number for those economists watching uh, this show. 6% for 10 years doubles your GDP every 10 years. Kaya ang target ng maraming economy is 6%, 6 to 7%, uh, in fact. So kung hindi natin ma-reclaim yan, mat matatanggal tayo doon sa growth trajectory natin at maraming mga bagay na, na afford na natin uh, recently like AFP modernization, uh, infrastructure investments, stronger social protection, all of these many good things will now be lost if we are unable to go back. And my parting message is this, that is why this election is so important because leadership and governance is what will bring back that 6% growth per year. And if we do not bring back better leaders, then we will risk actually losing it. Thank you so much for the chance to share these ideas. Thank you very much, Dean Mendoza. Like you said, leadership and governance very important to bring back that 6%. Uh, kaya pala masikip dito sa Zoom uh, because there is, uh, like Dean Mendoza was saying, there is an elephant of pandemic proportions in this Zoom room with us. And that one big issue for the elections, pandemic management, uh, or mismanagement, uh, the quality of education, you know, when are, we, when are, we, when are our kids going to go back to face-to-face -to -face classes? And like you said, uh, very important to remember, oo nga, online tayo, pero number one, may access bang lahat? At number two, paano naman yung disinformation dito sa tinatawag po ninyong uh, patient zero? And the, the very sobering reminder, 40 trillion peso economic loss because of this pandemic. Again, thank you so much, Dean Mendoza. I uh, will see you later pa rin, no? para sa Q&A uh, portion. At uh, kasama din natin po ngayon ang uh, kasalukuyang Vice Presidente ng Philippine Political Science Association at Chair ng Department of Political Science sa uh, University of Santo Tomas. Go Uste naman tayo ngayon. Kanina, one big fight. Ngayon, go Uste. Dr. Dennis Coronacion, magandang umaga po sa inyo. Dr. Coronacion, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Yes, magandang umaga po, Ma'am Pia. Uh, actually, President po ng Philippine Political Science Association. Opo. I'm sorry. Naku, na-demote po kayo. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay na po. That was my position before. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, just a quick question before you uh, go into your formal presentation, Dr. Coronacion, of Philippine politics, uh, like, we always, like we've always known, it seems to be, a, it seems, it is a family affair. Many ca candidates running for positions, nag-musical chairs lang sila, they take turns, no? For this term, yung, uh, yung uh, husband, the next term, asawa, the next term, anak. Pinsan, etc., etc., all over the place na sila. Um, and many of them closely related. Um, it seems uh, positions are passed on from uh, one member to another, one generation to another. Um, uh, they, they seem to be seat warmers. If you look at the House of Representatives uh, on a very, uh, uh, you know, through the very clear lens of uh, uh, political science, about three-fourths daw uh, ng every House of Representatives is uh, made up of uh, political families. Uh, family franchise na ang tawag ang politika. No? Um, uh, all politics is local where the families rule. So the question here is, why does this still continue uh, in spite of the fact that we are so very aware of this? Well, uh, tama po yung observation na yan, no? Um, uh, yung pong phenomenon uh, of political dynasties and political families dom dominating uh, the Philippine political landscape has been around, uh, I think, uh, since time immemorial. Ano? And uh, we can attribute that to, you know, just uh, like what was mentioned by uh, Doc Ella, we can attribute that to our weak uh, political party system or our weak party system. Uh, ang primary, one of the primary functions of uh, political parties is to recruit political elites or future political leaders. 
And it seems that in our setting, our political parties have continued to fail uh, in performing that function. So ang nangyayari po, uh, ang nagpe-perform yan, uh, instead of political parties, ay yung mga political families or dynasty, so to speak. And uh, as they perform that function, ang kanila pong inuunang i-recruit ay mga kapamilya nila. Of course, uh, uh, ang kanilang primary consideration dyan ay per perpetuation sa kapangyarihan at uh, self-preservation na rin. Oh, so, kaya hanggat uh, mahina ang ating ano, party system, uh, dapat sana sila ang nagsasala at nagre-recruit na mga nag-screen ng mga political, uh, future political leaders natin at political elites. Kung sila sana ang nagsasala, at least objective yung criteria. Oo, hindi yung kung, kung pamilya, particularly stick yung criteria uh, na kanilang sinusunod. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I just remembered uh, Dr. Coronacion because I covered the House of Representatives uh, 1995 to 1998. And at that time, usong-uso, pinapauso pinapau yung term na trapo. No? So traditional politicians. Trapo, of course, meaning basahan. <laughs> yung pangpunas ng mga marurume. No? At mar marumi na rin siya dahil na trapo. Tapos, merong pinauso na isa pang term na... Ang uh, term na ito ay BIMPO. BIMPO is uh, face towel. No? But BIMPO was supposed to be an acronym uh, that would mean uh, batang inihain ng magulang sa politika. So <laughs> yung mga anak na mga trapo, mga BIMPO. So BIMPO meaning, you know, malinis-linis pa, di ba? <laughs> so new, new faces, young faces, pero same name. But anyway, uh, mukhang uh, magiging uh, malalim at masalimuot. Este, makabuluhan ang inyong uh, presentation, Dr. Dennis Coronacion. So please, uh, go ahead. Uh, th uh, thank you, Ma'am Pia. All right. So uh, if I may just ask the uh, staff to please uh, project my... Yeah, all right. So uh, the title of my presentation is Election Campaigns in the New Normal. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I, actually, uh, uh, the, be, when I accepted this uh, invitation, I, uh, I saw in the email a bunch of questions uh, that, uh, as a guest speaker, uh, I had to, you know, I had to at least provide answers to. So, but ito po yung maraming mga katanungan na ibinato uh, uh, para sa presentation na to. Pero basically, uh, ito po mga katanungan na to, uh, uh, concerned the actually are concerned with the uh, you know how how political strategists and uh, candidates would go about in their political you know in their election campaigns uh, considering the fact that uh, we are now in a different uh, setting so this is a first time for us uh, although nagkaroon tayo ng uh, uh, unang karanasan yan uh, noong nagkaroon ng plebiscito sa Palawan uh, Kaya nga lang, I don't know if it would be enough for, you know, for, for us to learn from that experience. So basically, this is a new thing for, for you know, political strategists, practitioners in the field of communication, and even for political science students and as well as uh, candidates. So next slide, please. So ito pong presentation na to, actually, I... Uh, uh, nagpapasalamat ako dahil si Doc Ella uh, already gave us the context of uh, you know of the uh, election campaign yung pong theoretical underpinning provided ni Doc Ella and this also complements the presentation of uh, uh, Dean Mendoza so the election campaign dynamics will be uh, you know will be uh, facing some constraints and uh, so it says here that the election campaign dynamics will be informed by the constraints of the new normal. And uh, there are three constraints. Uh, obviously, uh, you have the physical restrictions, uh, which are meant to avoid the spread of COVID-19 virus. So uh, under this, pinapatupad po yung tinatawag na social distancing, o kaya doon sa mga infected na, o kaya feeling niya na infect uh, siya, yung self-quarantine, at may mga ilog ibang lugar, na every now and then ay nakakaranas ng lockdowns. Uh, and then ang pangalawa pong uh, constraint uh, ay yung tinatawag na travel restrictions. And definitely uh, these uh, restrictions are going to have an impact on the mobility of uh, the candidates. 
So kapag uh, dahil mahirap po mag-travel ngayon, although mas maluwag na kumpara da- sa dati, may mga protocol na kinakailangan sundin tulad na swab test. So it might uh, you know, it might affect uh, the travel itineraries of the national candidates and it may limit the number of their public engagements such as attending sorties in provinces. At ang ikatlo pong constraint ay nagmumula dun sa ethics. Uh, nabanggit na ito ni Doc Ella kanina that there seems to be a, a critical public view on politicking during the pandemic. Kaya nga po napansin natin, you know, uh, kung sumusubaybay kayo sa mga balita, uh, ilan ng mga kandidato ang either nagpostpone ng kanilang uh, launching ng kanilang campaign o kaya po hindi ganun ka bongga o bagaman yung kanilang uh, pag-anunsyo ng kanilang uh, pagtakbo. So uh, ito po itong itong mga ganito mga desisyon ay in accordance with you know with the uh, possibility na kapag uh, pinakita nila that they are too excited to engage in politics uh, hindi matutuwa yun yung yung, pub- yung publiko. So these are the constraints on election campaigns. Uh, next slide please. So uh, dahil po may mga ganyang restrictions sa uh, you know the political strategists as well as the candidates i think will be forced to shift to new campaign methods nabanggit na po kanina kung ano ano yung mga uh, ilan sa traditional methods and practices uh, pagdating sa pangampanya at meron din mga bago or new or modern campaign methods so while most of the traditional campaign methods will remain relevant and useful the restrictions will force the political strategists and candidates to rely heavily on the new methods of campaigning Hindi naman po uh, porque nandito na tayo sa bagong uh, setting ay uh, hin- nangangahulugan na wala ng halaga yun yung mga dating, yung mga pre-pandemic na uh, campaign practices. Hindi po, may mga ilan lugar, lalo na siguro sa probinsya, na in- siguro intense pa rin yung kanilang paggamit ng traditional methods. Uh, yan po, naka-enumerate naka, po dyan kung ano na yung mga yun. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think in so far as the national candidates are concerned, uh, they will have to uh, rely less on the traditional methods and practices. Uh, and then as for the modern campaign methods, ito po yung mga ilan, naka, naka, ano po dyan, nakalista yung ilan sa mga modern campaign methods. So kabilang po dyan yung uh, paggamit ng social media, uh, paggamit ng mga vlogs and blogs, at saka yung teleconferencing and Zoom. Well, uh, it marami yung ano advantages itong ano itong pag, paggamit ng modern campaign methods pero based on the initial experiences of our uh, political leaders may mga somehow may mga negative comments din sila mga reservations pagdating uh, sa paggamit ng modern campaign methods for example uh, in some interviews sinabi na uh, ng mga political leaders natin na okay sana yung Zoom uh, uh, te- in teleconferencing kaya nga lang uh, it lacks the depth uh, it lacks the depth maaring you know it can reach uh, uh, a good number of uh, the supporters and voters pero hindi ho ganun kalalim yung 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 bang engagement at saka interaction between the voters and supporters and the political leaders uh, sabi nga ng isang politiko parang kulang ng flair mm uh, unlike if you are engaged in a uh, in face-to-face campaign, mas um, magaman mas uh, nananaig yung mas mas ano siya, mas bonga o mas may dating. Oo. So next slide, please. Now, as for the virtual campaigns, uh, I think this is going to be an, an uncharted territory, or part of the uncharted territories uh, for the uh, you know for the political strategies and candidates. The new normal will force the political strategies and candidates to go out of their comfort zones. So yung mga tried and tested formula in order to increase the chances of winning of the candidates. Uh, I think uh, for, 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 this, uh, you know, for this campaign period, uh, they might have to rely less on, on, on those things and focus on something na bago sa kanila. So and to explore the unfamiliar territory of virtual election campaigns. Now, uh, as the number of internet and social media users in the country increases, 
There is also an increasing number of Filipinos who rely on the internet as the primary source of political information, whether verified or unverified. Well, actually, based on, on, on some uh, facts, uh, I think uh, 73.91 million uh, uh, in, you know, uh, are internet users in this country. That's as of January 2021. So medyo malaki-laki na po yun, uh, if we're going to compare that to our total population, which is 110 million. And then uh, the internet penetration rate is 67%, and that there are 89 million social media users. That's as of January 21, according to datareportal.com. So malaking bagay po itong mga, ano, itong mga numbers na to, uh, considering that uh, it is anticipated that uh, a good number of uh, political strategists and candidates, candidates uh, would rely on, uh, on social media and even on the internet uh, during the campaign. Uh, the contents of political websites and social media accounts have largely influenced the public's political views and dominated uh, public discourse. Uh, kadalasan po ang mga issues uh, patungkol sa politika ay mas pinag-uusapan sa mga social media uh, platforms. Uh, kaysa sa, kung, kung bagaman ito na huwing naging venue eh, uh, ng, ng public discourse. And uh, since the key political offices are at stake, uh, whether at the national level and at the local level, we are expecting that uh, the virtual campaigns will become the new battle zones. So kung dati po, uh, madalas nagsasagutan siguro yung mga national candidates natin, nagpapatutsyadahan sa, sa mga sabi natin na sa, sa pamagitan ng kanilang mga TV political ads, uh, this time around, bukang mas, magre, mas magagamitin pa nila yung social media. Uh, and this uh, will become the new uh, battle zone for them. Next slide, please. Now, uh, there's a question. There's a question uh, about uh, managing the clients. You know, how, how are the political strategies going to manage uh, their clients and candidates? Uh, ang nakikita ko po dito is that uh, yung, yung kanilang relasyon uh, will we'll have to focus on building a strategy that is centered on social media in the internet. Uh, so they should work hard in building up the candidate's public image and to increase his visibility. So when it comes to building a public image, again, re reminding uh, us of the ethical constraint which I mentioned earlier, uh, kinakailangan, uh, parang hindi, hindi lang ano eh, uh, yung pag-build ng public image ng isang kandidato, hindi na yung traditional na kinakailangan ipakita siya as uh, uh, someone who's uh, capable of uh, leading the country or a certain locality. Uh, give, uh, although, importante pa rin yun, pero siguro dapat mas ikonsidera uh, sa pagbibuild ng public image ng mga kandidato yung bang mga bagong ethical constraints. Kaya nga, hindi nakakagulat na recently may mga kandidato na mas gusto na i-portray yung kanilang sarili as a reluctant candidate or sa, as someone uh, who has a restrained desire for public office. Tapos may mga kandidato rin na pinoportray nila yung sarili na well, nag, nag positive naman talaga sila, na infect sila uh, ng, ng virus. And uh, you know, they would like to uh, kumagaman, uh, send the message to the others, to the voters, na sila rin ay nagsuffer sa pandemic, yung, yung kanilang health. So I think that's going to, you know, allow them to score some points. And then, meron ding mga ano, uh, meron ding uh, ilang mga kandidato na pinapakita nila yung sarili nila as uh, an ordinary human being. Actually, hindi may mga ilan sa mga content sa mga sa internet and even sa social media na pinapakita ng mga kandidato ay uh, namumuhay rin na parang isang ordinary yung tao. Uh, hindi lang politika ang kanilang inaatupag, kundi ina-upload ina rin nila yung mga videos na sinasabi na sila ay bawa may mga alagang aso, okay, nagtatanim din, uh, and so on and so forth. Now, when it comes to increasing public visibility, 
Uh, this is in consideration of the physical and travel restrictions. Uh, dahil bawal na nga ho yung 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 uh, face to face interactions between the you know between the candidates and the voters. Mag, mag, as I said earlier, uh, mas mag rely uh, heavily on social media. Now, uh, may, there's a pressure on the part of the candidates and strategists to constantly update and frequently update uh, kung yan man ay social media account o kaya website o kung ano man. Uh, because uh, yan nga ho yung, yung nagiging primary source of uh, political information ng mga botante o ng publiko. So it would help a lot if uh, you know uh, they would constantly up update yung mga ano yung kanila mga social media uh, accounts. Now uh, it's also expected that a huge chunk of the campaign funds will be spent on social media presence. Mayroon mga nagsasabi na makakatipid uh, dahil uh, pandemic mas makakatipid yung yung mga kandidato. Actually sa tingin ko pareho rin yung gasto so baka madagdagan pa. Uh, yung kanilang campaign expenses, but a huge portion of their campaign funds, uh, I think, would be diverted to social media, to increasing their social media presence. So, yan po ang um, pagdating sa uh, increasing uh, public visibility and building a public image. Uh, next slide, please. Now, uh, if I think th there's something novel about this uh, campaign, uh, about this election, uh, we, we can see here the rise of the new spin doctors. If uh, in the past, ang mga uh, nangangalaga doon sa public image uh, ng, you know, ng mga kandidato ay yung mga PR consultants, mga experts sa uh, field ng communication, I think uh, the, the, this time we're going to see uh, an, you know, that a new layer of campaign experts and professionals will be ushered in. So there is a going to be a growing need for the services of vloggers and then celebrities with strong media, social media presence and influencers. So yung mga kung noon, uh, sapat na na makita ang isang kandidato sa kanyang political ad, nakasama niya o inaendorso siya ng isang uh, sikat na showbiz celebrity. I think this, this, this time around, uh, mas uh, ikakwalify pa nila kung anong klaseng celebrity. Dapat uh, kung ito ay showbiz celebrity, dapat meron siyang strong social media presence or maraming followers. And I think uh, that ito rin yung panahon na yung mga influencers would become relevant in election campaigns. And then we're also going to see uh, troll armies continuing to spread fake information. So this was already mentioned by Dean Mendoza and Doc Ella Tienza. Now, uh, campaign staff hiring will lead will lean toward social media practitioners. So more and more videographers and content creators will be hired for the purpose of uh, enhancing the image of the candidates. So, ayan po, rise of the new spin doctors. Next slide, please. Uh, how about in terms of uh, communicating with the voters? Because one of the questions raised, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the email was that uh, how how would the you know how would the political strategies and the candidates communicate uh, with the voters? Well, the political strategists must draw up a communication strategy that is uh, direct, simple, responsive, and creative. So. Kung napapansin po natin sa mga threads, yung mga comments uh, sa mga social media posts, uh, kung gaano kababaw yung, yung, yung diskurso o yung level ng pagkakaintindi ng mga kababayan natin patungkol sa isang issue, I think this serves as a cue for political strategies and candidates as to what kind of words they have to use uh, and uh, to what extent are, are they going to simplify issues. So dapat po direkta, simple, at uh, sumasagot talaga sa mga issues at mga katanungan and creative. Um, when you say creative, uh, yun, yun, yun iba po, kagaya na sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, uh, nagre-rely pa rin sa mga you know, entertainment. So, so it's a mixture of uh, entertainment and, uh, and uh, serious information. 
that sa, tapos uh, aside from that there should also be a feedback mechanism when you communicate uh, when candidates and strategies communicate with the voters uh, there should be a feedback loop so the communication between the candidates and the voters should be two way actually parte po yan ng features ng mga social media platforms na hindi lang po one way ang flow ng ng information uh, this time around uh, you know the the recipients of information are empowered to you know to communicate to interact you know with with the source of the information so kung magaman lamang po ngayon yung mabilis sumagot no at uh, tama yung sagot mm -hmm. so when it comes to the platform of government of the candidates uh well uh siguro magwo work if it's going to be based on democratic principles Kasi we have seen in the past uh, five years na yung, yung non-democratic principles when using governance, especially during the time of pandemic, uh, have not worked well. Oo. Kasi kinakailangan uh, hindi sarado ang utak ng isang leader sa paggawa uh, ng mga solusyon sa problema. Kinakailangan rin may mga mungkahi galing sa publiko. I think that's the uh better way of uh, solving problems in this country and uh, it should be distinctive so nabanggit kanina ni Doc Ella na mahirap i-distinguish yung mga platform of government and ideology ng mga kandidato totoo po yun. so i think it it's going to help a lot yung mga candidates if they're going to present if they're going to come up with a platform of government uh that is that can be distinguished from the others dapat uh, differentiated Para, ma para meron talagang totoong choice yung mga tao. And then the solutions to the country's problems should be effective, relevant, and doable. So if, sometimes uh, it's quite easy for, for, for a political leader to come up with a solution based on his fantasy. Hindi naman realistic, hindi naman grounded sa reality. So sana yung mga problems, yung mga uh, yung mga solutions to our problems uh, that will be presented to the voters are those that are effective. Dapat ano eh, uh, kung, kung ito ay pandemic problem, sana uh, we would consult the medical experts. Diba kung ito ay problema sa ekonomiya natin, we would consult the economists. At sana madaling gawin, hindi yung parang imposible. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, still on uh, the same uh, topic, communicating with the voters. Now, the interactive character of social media provides an opportunity for the voters to get to know better the candidates. As I said earlier, ito po yung isa sa mga features ng social media, iba't ibang social media platforms for them to talk back, for the voters, uh, for the social media users to be able to talk back to the candidates. And uh, the ultimate goal, of course, of uh, communicating with the voters is to persuade them to choose the candidate. Uh, this is very important for the political strategists as well as the candidates. Hindi ho dapat kayo huminto o magsettle doon sa kung yung bawa yung inyong mga pinopost ay nag-ani o nakakuha ng maraming likes. Kahit ilang millions of likes pa yan or views or followers Kung hindi ho natin kaya i-translate yan into votes, sayang lang po yung effort. Oho. So that's one thing that we need, we need to know about this one. Uh, hindi porque maraming likes, uh, hindi, mar maraming nagkagusto, maraming nagfollow, maraming nagview, nangangahulugan na success, successful yung campaign. No, uh, success in, can, in, in, in election campaigns can be determined by the number of votes cast you know, uh, in support of your candidate. So, yan po ang ultimate goal of uh, communicating with the voters. So, from increasing the public awareness uh, about your candidate to translating that public awareness into actual votes. I think that's the true measure of uh, a successful election campaign. Next slide, please. Now, there's also a question about the impact on voting turnout. Uh, yung, bang, yung bang successful election campaign can somehow contribute to a high voting turnout. Of course, if this is going to happen on a massive scale, definitely 
it's going to translate into a high voting turnout. Uh, last the, during the last presidential election in 2016, the, the voting turnout was 78%. Mm -hmm. Mataas po yun. Uh, well, every, every presidential election naman talaga mataas ang ano eh, uh, voting turnout. But uh, for this uh, uh, May 2022 election, uh, if we're going to go by the uh, words of uh, Comelec spokesperson James Jimenez, the target of Comelec is 80%. So yung, yung, yung mga successful election campaigns, uh, if they prove to be successful Indeed, uh, they're going to contribute to the target of Comelec to reach 80% in voting turnout uh, by May, May 2022. So next slide. So I'm down to my last slide. Uh, ito na yung conclusion. So, so to draw up an effective uh, virtual campaign strategy, uh, one must be quick in taking cognizance of the democratizing effect of the internet and social media on the upcoming elections. So we have to seize that uh, chance uh, na yung, yung kung mayroong mga magandang epekto, yung pag-rely heavily sa social media at sa internet, ito yung mas napapalapit uh, yung mga botante doon sa mga kandidato, even though they're divided by distance. Pero on the other hand, we should also be aware of the negative uh, uh, effects of uh, uh, relying heavily on on social media and the internet. Marami pang mga, I'm sure may maram, maraming, ano, I, I heard of a, one story saying, I don't know if this is going to happen, na mas magiging talamak daw ang vote buying. Kasi instead of going, you know, the, the candidates or the representatives of the, the candidates going there personally sa mga botante, i-gcash na lang daw yung, yung, yung amount. So may mga ano eh, may mga uh, may mga advantages and disadvantages but I'd like to focus on the advantages. And although it may sound self-serving for political strategies and candidates, successful election campaigns which may result in high voting turnout can contribute to Philippine democracy by ensuring the legitimacy of the election results. Of course, uh, logically pag mababa yung 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 voting turnout Ibig sabihin, mababa rin yung uh, legitimacy ng resulta. So pag mataas, mataas din ang legitimacy. So we're all hoping na, na as, you know, as uh, the political strategists and uh, candidates shift to a new mode of campaigning, hindi sana magbago yung, yung, you know, yung mga, some of the principles, democratic principles that we cherish. Oh, like in legitimacy, transparency, uh, integrity of the elections. So on that note, I'd like to end my presentation. Maraming salamat po sa pagkakataon na ibahagi ko ang aking mga ilan sa mga reflections patungkol sa darating na halalan. Maraming salamat po sa inyo, Dr. Dennis Coronacion. Uh, very, very interesting talk, very detailed. Um, I, I like what you said, virtual campaigns are the new battleground. Uh, the numbers you gave us, uh, wow, has 73.91 million internet users, 89 million social media users. Uh, naisip ko lang no, sana humabol yung ano, bilang ng registrado at ng bakunado din. Pero kung registrado ang pinag-uusapan, like you said, yung likes on social media, hindi po yan boto. Uh, very interesting also what you talked about, yung the rise of the new spin doctors. Uh, I really hope that people here uh, listening and, and watching pay very close attention to that because uh, a lot of young people are on social media um, and many of you uh, listen and um, respect no? and, and really take uh, as, as gospel truth sometimes what, your, uh, what uh, uh, your favorite influencers say. So I hope you paid attention to that. Uh, also interesting, uh, Dr. Coronation, when you talked about how uh, it's important uh, that social media provides that talk back uh, factor and uh, the, yung uh, bayaran daw, yung GCash. <laughs> yung GCash ba na yon, eh, before or after voting? But we'll talk about that later. So marami salamat po, uh, Dr. Coronation. And a reminder, very quick reminder to participants, um, if you want to ask a question, wag, wag nyo na lang po ilagay sa, sa, cha, uh, sa chat. Ay, sorry. Yes. Wag nyo ilagay sa chat dahil sobrang haba ng chat. Maraming mga 
uh, telling us where they're watching from. Ilagay po ninyo on, on the lower right of your screen sa Q&A. There is a Q&A uh, icon on the lower right, very near the leave button. Okay, wag ko yung mag-leave. <laughs> Dito po kayo sa Q&A maglagay ng, ng inyong mga tanong. So now, um, uh, like we said, uh, Dr. Coronacion, Dennis Coronacion, thank you so much. Uh, very, very great perspective on our topic. So maraming salamat po. Now we're very fortunate to have with us uh, someone who is uh, uh, probably preparing or uh, actually preparing uh, extensively translation nangangarag uh, for the campaign the spokesperson of uh, the vice president of the philippines uh, lenny robredo attorney ibarra barry gutierrez the third barry thank you so much for accommodating us today despite your very very busy schedule um and my first question to you uh pampagising lang so <laughs> ikaw na ba ikaw na if lenny makes it ikaw na ba ang next harry roque uh, una, wala akong ambisyon maging si Harry Roque. Let's uh, get that out of the way. Uh, pangalawa, mahirap magsalita about what happens after the election. Uh, kasi simula pa lang, the Vice President just declared last Thursday, there are, as of today, ano ba, 208 days before the May 9 election. So our focus, our razor-sharp, laser focus is very much on the campaign. What yeah. follows afterwards, well, you know, we can talk about that when we're there. And also, our razor sharp uh, focus is also on November 15, di ba? Because and dami pang pwede mangyari before November 15, and that will be a uh, kumbaga D day for all of us. So we're all uh, looking at that excite very uh, with much excitement. Um, uh, but uh, Attorney Barry, uh, one one other question uh, before we go into your presentation. Uh, so one of the biggest campaign strategies, syempre, ang pinag sana, you know, united opposition. Uh, what can you say about talk in the grapevine that the unity talks? have already failed? Or is there still hope between now and November uh, 15? Uh, Siyempre, ang pinag-uusapan natin dito, Lenny Manny Ping Isko. Well, the Vice President has already addressed that uh, several times uh, since she actually made her declaration uh, that she was running for president last Thursday. And I think that the, uh, the message is very clear. Uh, right now, uh, she believes that, you know, unfortunately, the, the unity talks uh, did not materialize as uh, as intended, uh, which prompted her to actually file her own candidacy. Uh, so the focus is now on her own uh, campaign. But of course, uh, with, with several weeks to go before November 15, the deadline for substitution, things can still happen. So the door remains open for conversations. But, but as of now, the priority and the focus is uh, is preparing for the uh, for the actual campaign. But, you know, uh, we'll see uh, what happens. Tatanin ko sana eh, but she's not sliding down, eh, no? Pero I'm sure. <laughs> Sinabi naman ni VP Lenny yun, di ba? Kapag nag-file ako, yalaban ko to hanggang sa dulo. So I don't think that, that there's any possibility of that. Okay, you know, every time we talk to a spokesperson of any of the candidates, ang ni-imagine namin talaga eh, paano pag siya ang pumalit kay Harry Roque? But anyway. Good God! <laughs> okay, um, let's go now to your presentation, Barry. Go ahead, please. Okay, like uh, si Doc Ron ganina, I don't really have uh, slides uh, prepared. Actually, when I was first invited uh, to speak uh, in the seminar several weeks ago, uh, I actually was at a loss in a way because there was a lot of uncertainty regarding where we would be uh, with specific uh, perspective on the vice president's campaign, if there was going to be one. Uh, dahil October 13 pa to eh, uh, and October 8 yung, uh, yung filing. So there was a scenario where hindi siya declare and you know, I would simply be talking as an interested observer an academic uh, on uh, on the issue that we are uh, going to be taking up today, or like now, I would be talking as an actual part of uh, of an actual campaign that is preparing and gearing up for the unique and possibly very difficult terrain that we will have to navigate going into the May 9, 2022 elections. Um, originally, uh, I planned to actually talk of you know by the numbers. Uh, campaign, uh, much like you know many of the points of which to touch on ng ating earlier speakers, si Dr. Achenza, si Dr. Coronacion, si si Doc Ron, uh, and you know, uh, ko naman, as experts, they they covered very well and uh, very comprehensively 
uh, what we can expect uh, in a situation where the pandemic is still very much uh, being felt. There will still be very, very strict restrictions on gatherings, on movements. Uh, in fact, uh, I was talking to somebody who had uh, an opportunity to see the draft of the Commission on Elections on guidelines for campaigning. At talagang napaka-strict to daw. Uh, limitations talaga on, uh, on public gatherings, limitations on the traditional campaign activities we have come to expect uh, in a usual uh, campaign. So this will really be very different. But nung yung plano ko to talk about this in by the numbers. Ibig sabihin, you know, let's focus more on SOCMED, uh, less less uh, less physical campaigning and so on. In a way that uh, that changed uh, with what happened on uh, on Thursday. Um, after the vice president declared that she was going to seek the presidency in 2022, the resulting response uh, both on social media and outside uh, tinatawag ng ibang mga taong uh, pink explosion really uh, took us uh, by surprise uh, let, let, let's uh, let's be clear about that we did not expect the volume we did not expect the the intensity of uh, of the of the positive response uh, to her speech uh, and her declaration uh, but more than that it opened our eyes to the possibility of actually running a campaign that would be different not only because of the restrictions imposed by COVID, not only because of probably the greater emphasis on tech-driven or tech-supported campaigning like social media or uh, through chat groups or through um, uh, apps like, uh, like Zoom, but the possibility of running a campaign not traditional in the machinery sense, but anchored on what VP Lenny last Friday started calling a uh, a people's campaign. And, you know, I I think that I will spend my time, the limited time I have uh, this morning, if you all don't mind, trying to talk about that and, and make sense of what that could possibly look like and how that will be applied in the context of uh, the pandemic we are all facing uh, right now. So apart from the public responses uh, last Thursday, uh, yung mga naging, nag, nag, naglagay ng mga, pain, ng mga pink, ng mga profile pictures nila, yung mga nag-ilaw ng pink sa, sa paligid, nagtali ng mga ribbons ng pink, nagsuot ng pink, etc. all over social media and, and outside of, uh, of social media. Um, the probably less seen and less noticed uh, response to the Vice President's declaration was the deluge of, uh, of volunteers people who would reach out through uh through through messaging through calling through posting on social media that they wanted to volunteer and hindi lang to mga volunteer na simpleng uh, nag-arrange yung volunteers from yung mga simpleng we, we we want to be warm bodies we want to give us give us uh, give us materials to share namin tell us ano yung mga mensaheng uh, dapat uh, dapat tumabas kakausapin namin yung mga kakilala namin to people who had specific skill sets communications people, marketing people, uh, lawyers, IT experts. Ang sasabi na ito yung aming mga skill sets and we want to be part of uh, of the campaign kasi naniniwala kami uh, na uh, itong pagdeklara ni VP Lenny ay nakapagbigay pag-asa uh, sa amin at sa sa aming bansa. So, the initial challenge for us was really two things. One, how do you maintain the energy, the excitement, the momentum generated by the Thursday announcement? And two, how do you make sense? How do you channel all this volunteer energy, all these all these offers na maging part ng campaign? Uh, and you know, na hindi sa sabog, na in a way na hindi sa sabog, na kung saan saan sila mapupunta. But on the other hand, hindi naman sa sobrang bagal o sa sobrang stifling ang feeling nila nakakahun sila and they will also lose uh, enthusiasm and interest, which sa tingin namin was very crucial in maintaining uh, the the engagement and involvement of a lot of the people who uh, who offered. So right now, uh, I cannot say na solved na namin yan. We are in the we, we are in the middle uh, of that process. But at least the the framework, the beginnings of an approach uh, are being uh, are being formulated and is slowly coming into shape and you know a clearer picture is being formed as to magi ano magiging itsura. And one I one one 
pillar of this approach, I think, is you really can't insist on centralism anymore. Okay? You really can't insist on a traditional hierarchical structure na ito yung uh, central campaign, binababa sa lahat ng mga, ng mga volunteers at kailangan nilang sumunod ng uh, talagang strictong-stricto. Uh, hindi. Uh, and, and, and one of the reasons for that is the administrative effort <laughs> the, to, to actually police y y y your own ranks. To actually have to download a single message and a single set of materials and a single perspective sa lahat ng mga gusto mag-participate is just going to be too much. It's going to take up too, too much energy. And besides, one of the key strengths, we think, of yung nangyari last Thursday was, you know, people spontaneously came out. And in that spontaneous coming out, their energy, their creativity, yung kanilang uh, excitement, express itself in so many ways and that contributed further. Uh, parang merong may multiplier effect na dahil, dahil na-excite sila, dahil kumilo sila, dahil feeling nila, meron silang taya, specific. Hindi lang sila tagababa ng mensahe na nanggaling sa iba o taga-distribute ng materials na, na ginawa ng iba. The level of investment and engagement diba, was much uh, stronger. And I think that uh, that is one of the key advantages uh, sa ganong klaseng uh, kampanya. You are not just drawing in people who will participate, who will follow, and you know, ultimately vote. You are drawing in people who will be advocates, who will be promoters, who will be active campaigners within their own spheres and within their own uh, networks. So the, the key then is to be able to provide them with the tools that they need. Kasi, ibang tao, gusto gumawa ng materials, we need photos, we need videos, we need uh, statements, done. Merong, uh, merong, merong tool na ginawa for that so that volunteers can easy, easily access their resources. Yung iba, may mga specific questions. How do we answer these, uh, these, these concerns? Kasi one of, the, one of the disadvantages or the obstacles that we are facing uh, in so far as VP Lenny uh, as a candidate is concerned is she has been the, 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 the target of a campaign of disinformation on social media that has lasted for the better part of the last six years. Hindi talaga tinantanan yan. Diba? Talagang tuloy-tuloy ang banat, tuloy-tuloy ang paninira, tuloy-tuloy ang fake news over the last six years. Diba? So madami ang mga tanong nag arise from yung mga fake news na, na kwentong iyon. So, Again, yung ibang mga tanong, paano namin sasagutin ito? Paano namin ipapaliwanag? Paano namin ipapakita kung ano yung talagang nangyari, anong kanyang sinabi, anong kanyang ginawa? So again, there's a tool for that. Makukuha nila yung ganong information and they can use it to actually work within their own respective uh, spheres. So the idea is, hindi lang ito kampanya na traditional, na itong mga taong kumikilos for the campaign team, the campaign, the campaign workers, but also... All the other people, diba, na normally, you know, passive observers, passive supporters, boboto sa election, but possibly not more than that. Possibly na magkakabit ng sticker, etc. But but that's it. Become more active participants in uh, the campaign itself. Uh, become agents, diba, on their own. Na mayroong sariling pagkilos at mayroong sariling value at may sariling sphere of influence na, na kinikilusan. And I think that in relation to the pandemic, that's going to be one of the crucial avenues and crucial areas of engagement. I mean, totoo, social media and traditional media and all these technology-mediated uh, uh, mechanisms in order to get out your message will play a key role, definitely. But I think that we cannot overlook the, in a way, the revival or the renewed emphasis on person-to-person -person interaction. Kasi even in the midst of a pandemic, madami naman tayo nakakausap eh. Sarili na natin mga kapamilya, uh, kapitbahay, uh, sa community. Uh, many of us are uh, part of mga family chat groups or barkada chat groups. Many of us have Zoom meetings with colleagues, with friends, mga kakilala na that, that, that we stay uh, in touch with. Many of us, actually, kahit pa paano, nagtatrabaho, kahit na hindi tayo, uh, yung, iba, hindi, yung iba work from home, yung iba pumapasok sa opisina, and we encounter a lot of people in our daily uh, activities. And that's the key, di ba? Hindi mo na kailangan mag-bring together ng mga tao sa mga malalaking rally. If you have lots of people willing to do your campaigning or the campaigning uh, within their existing day-to-day -day routines, within their existing 
networks. You just have to be able to, one, motivate and mobilize them. And right now, ang daming ganon. Uh, the motivation and the mobilization is already there. Uh, we just need to sustain it. And pangalawa, to equip them with the necessary information, the necessary materials na pwede nilang magamit. Diba? In that, uh, in a way, uh, parang smaller scale, diba? parang multiple uh, entry, multiple point uh, campaigning. So that gets around the difficulties posed by the pandemic insofar as large gatherings are concerned. But at the same time, it is not completely reliant on social media. Because to a certain extent, and going into uh, before Thursday, this was one of my biggest worries, kung talagang social media ang magiging principal venue para sa usapan sa eleksyong ito, nakakatakot yung implications nun. Because social media is really a, an arena that is dominated ng pera. Diba? Uh, it is really designed to favor people. It is really designed to favor institutions na kayang gumastos to get their message out. Targeted ads, uh, maintenance of troll armies, pagkakaroon ng, uh, ng mga malalaking mga makinarya to actually mobilize and send out a, a uniform message. We've seen that. We've seen the effects of that in the last uh, six years already. So we are optimistic. We are hopeful. We are excited that we don't need to rely on that alone. Although, of course, one of the asks na hinihingi namin sa, sa mga volunteers in this people's campaign effort is also to engage on social media. In other words, totoong tao na mag-share, totoong tao na mag-react at mag-comment, totoong tao na magpapaliwanag. That's really one of the keys dito and that's one of the ways forward we can see past you know, a, a situation where it is one troll army against another uh, troll army. Where it is one set of funded uh, resources maintaining all these uh, dummy accounts going up against another set of funded uh, of funders funding a different set of uh, of dummy accounts we have to get past that eh? and that's not just for, for purposes of the campaign that's for, for purposes of actually getting us out of this vicious spiral that we are in kung ang conversations in social media will never get past the point ng pakikipag-away because of the so many trolls na nagpo-proliferate dyan and because the social media providers themselves have not taken sufficient steps to, to crack down on that kind of, uh, of behavior, then we have to do it ourselves by pushing for a certain kind, for, for, for pushing for an engagement that will actually uh, at least push us, hopefully, out of that, uh, out of that spiral and, and back into real uh, conversations. Now, I'm sure a lot of uh, people that I have talked to regarding this particular approach have been you know, understandably cynical. Ako din naman eh, di ba? Lahat naman tayo dito, to a certain extent, we've seen elections uh, come and go. We, we know uh, how the game is played. Uh, we know, di ba, the, the importance of money and, uh, and machinery. But honestly, what I saw last Thursday and what I've seen since then, uh, the people I have talked to, the people I have engaged with, um, has given me a uh, hope that it might be possible for a fresh perspective uh, to come in, for a fresh approach to be adopted uh, in this election. Uh, part of that is due to the, the, the particular circumstances that, that have arisen because of the pandemic. But part of that has also been the wave of volunteerism that has uh, emerged. And I'd like to think that yung points na ni-raise kanina ni Dean Ron, yung point kanina na, na, na binanggit din ni, uh, ni, ni, ni Dr. Achenza at ni, at ni Dr. Dennis Coronacion regarding a certain pent-up frustration uh, over where we have come uh, in the last uh, five and a half years and particularly in the last 18 months has prompted that increased level of engagement and that desire to be uh, involved. We are just fortunate na naging... Uh, attractive para sa mga madami sa mga taong yan yung sinabi ni VP Lenny nung Thursday uh, yung who she is as a, as a person and that uh, a lot of uh, these people are now uh, be engaging with us uh, with all their energy uh, and their excitement and moving forward it's something we are excited to be able to engage with and we are uh, very happy 
to be able to try uh, in this new terrain and uh, in this new environment. Hopefully, at the end of the day, uh, there will be smiles, diba? And uh, and a uh, fresh hope na pwede naman pala magkaroon ng ganitong klaseng approach sa, well, oftentimes cynical at jaded perspective natin sa politika. So I think I'll uh, stop there at uh, maraming salamat. Sabi mo, Barry, wala kang presentation na haba na. <laughs> Spokesperson, sorry. Uh, diba? <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I just noticed, and very quickly, I need to say this. Um, uh, um, among the things we do as journalists is to, oh, I, I, I do know, I really observe uh, facial expression, body language, and everything. And in the last six years, every time you hold a press conference or when we interview you or when you, you know, talk to the media, Lagi kang nakasimangot, nakakunot ang noo, ang dilim ng mukha mo, at para kang problemadong problemado. Pero ngayon, you're so you're so happy, no? And then maaliwala. <laughs> Either you're very happy or maganda lang yung ilaw mo ngayon. <laughs> but anyway, um, we, we've run out of time. And grabe, we're behind the schedule. But I wanted to ask this very important question. Um... Uh, very quickly and then very quickly yung answer mo ha. as in kung pwede one word answer Barry ha okay why pink and not yellow and why independent and not LP it's a signal that we are open to everybody who wants to help and who shares the vice president's vision for the country that's the simple answer diba? we, without... we needed to signal that uh, this is not just about colors this is about a shared vision and anybody who agrees Anybody who wants to get uh, with us, there is room for you. There is space for you. So why pink? You know, because <laughs> because right now, diba, pink is the color of hope and resistance all over the world, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, well, thank you very much uh, for sharing all of that with us. Uh, Attorney Barry Gutierrez. Uh, it's a very difficult job, of course, for the candidates. We need to move on. No? And uh, it's going to be very, very rigorous for the campaign teams. So to shed light on how rigorous it would be, we have a veteran campaign strategist joining us today, uh, another old friend of mine. And I'm so uh, honored to be here with him also, uh, Mr. Lito Banayo. Good morning. Good morning, Parimba. Yes. Uh, good morning, Sir Lito. Good morning, Pia. Nice to be with you. And in the presence of uh, distinguished academics, I feel so humbled uh, kasi hindi ako ganong kataas ang pinag-aralan. Um, uh, the, the, even the, the, the term you use that I'm a veteran campaign strategist isn't really correct. No? I'm, I, I classify myself as just a political technician, not, not, a, not a strategist, no? I started off uh, getting interested in politics. I finished uh, economics and business administration. And politics was very far from my mind, except that uh, I met uh, Nino Aquino in the United States. I was living in Virginia at that time. And uh, Nino was in Boston. He would make frequent visits to Washington, D.C. And that's where our paths crossed. So nung pabalik na ako ng Pilipinas, no 1982, he asked me, Sabi niya, meron kang mga marketing skills and uh, campaigns are uh, basically political marketing. Baka pwedeng tulungan mo ang opposition. And he assigned me to Vice President Doy Laurel, who eventually became my ninong sa kasal. No? So that, that explains uh, my, my entry into politics. Uh, so ganon. Tapos yung Cory Doy campaign, I was quite involved in that. And later on, uh, my first lesson, my first bitter lesson in politics was to think that um, the political machinery was all too important in a national elections. No? And uh, because I um, goaded uh, or convinced then Chief Justice Marcelo Fernand to run for the presidency, that didn't pan out properly. Napunta ko sa Vice President si Fernand with uh, the late Monching Mitra. And uh, that is where I learned that despite the fact that 95% of all uh, the politicians in the country were members of LDP, uh, hindi yun ang importante pag presidente ang pinag-uusapan. Ang importante yung message mo at importante how you communicate that message to win the hearts and minds of people. That is where we failed because we relied on the political machinery. So next time around, kay era pa ko, I think we had very good messaging. 
I think we had very good uh, communications of uh, medium, uh, the mediums that we used no? for that messaging, yung era para sa mahirap, which we retained throughout the campaign. And, so, and it was a spectacular victory on the part of era. Of course, there is a, this disconnect between winning an election and governing a country. Huwag na natin pag-usapan yun dahil nagdaan na yun. No? Um, pagkatapos, uh, uh, I stuck it out with Ping Lakson no? because I believed in the guy uh, despite the fact that uh, FPJ was the shooter candidate. No? And that is when I realized that charisma is very important in a national candidate, especially for the presidency. Um, kasi, over the years, I've learned that, one, there is a big disconnect between uh, how people choose their local leaders, whether congressman, although national post, supposedly uh, mayor, governor, councillors, etc. That is where the dynasts proliferate because they have mastered the art of using uh, money, machinery, uh, not so much the messaging, but the use of money and machinery to perpetuate themselves in public office. Pero fortunately for us, fortunately for us, and this has been borne by several elections in the past, people separate their decision to vote for a local politician from their decision to vote for a president or vice president, particularly the president. Uh, Somehow, kaya mahirap nating ipilit yung parliamentary system dito sa ating bansa. Not at the moment, given our lack of political maturity, sad to speak. Um, yung mga tao sa atin, feeling nila, um, sovereign right nila yung bumoto ng presidente. It's the only time when they think, they think, they believe in their hearts and minds that they're able to, to, to somehow affect the destiny of the nation and the impact of such on their personal lives. Kaya gusto nila sila ang bumoboto, sila ang pumipili ng presidente. And the, the very good examples of these were the Duterte campaign and the Pinoy campaign, no? uh, where I was also involved. No? In the Pinoy campaign, despite a lack of resources, despite, ano, uh, we capitalized, of, of course, to be honest, on the on the, the fact that uh, Pinoy was the son of Cory and Ninoy. No? So we, we, re, we evoked those images. And then, kinombine namin yung the fact that at that time, uh, the, the incumbent administration was reviled because of perceptions of uh, massive graft and corruption. So kaya nga, I think it was Yoli Ong who, who, who came out with the message na ano, na pag walang korap, walang mahirap. No? So that, that resonated. And then the Daang Matuid, which uh, guys like Mon Jimenez and uh, us uh, came up with. No? So the message became very powerful against very powerful politicians who had plenty of money. No? Pangalawa, panga, yung huli was Duterte. Okay. Uh, iba naman yon. I convinced Mayor Duterte in January 8th of 2015, together with Sani Dominguez, ES, uh, well, now ES uh, Medeldea, Bebot Alvarez, and of course the ubiquitous Bongo, to try to make a try. Why did I say that? I gave him a chart which showed that at least that 23% of the country is Mindanao, no? of the 20% of the Visayas, 10.5 to 11% is Pic Cebuano, Visaya. No? And so I said, Mebro Kampuhunan, and it's basically geographic and ethno-linguistic based. So we capitalize on that. And I said, don't forget, Metro Manila has probably 15% of Metro Manila are actually Cebuano Bisaya speakers. So do kami nag capitalize. And then everyone knew, of course, that Duterte was matapang, that was the perception all over, courage. But kailangan may hugot yung, yung courage na yun. And that's why I coined tapang at malasakit. So yung hugot ng tapang is the malasakit sa taong bayan, especially the poor. And so that was my first ad, uh, tapang at malasakit. And that resonated until later we changed it because we saw 
through surveys that people wanted radical change, not just cosmetic change, not just a little change, but radical change. And so that was when we came up with uh, change is coming and we presented change as the embodiment of uh, uh, Rodrigo Duterte's uh, campaign. So why, why am I saying this? No? To me, very important, whether it is now or in the past, no? you, to be guided by research, to be guided by quantitative and qualitative research, uh, the tools which uh, my professors at uh, UPNC PAG uh, kept drilling on me before. No? Na kailangan yung uh, surveys at kailangan yung FGDs, to, to put it in very simple terms. So now when I'm running or I'm, I'm helping in the ISCO campaign, I uh, always insist that we be guided by such uh, research. No? Um, the research has uh, given us insights on the issues that matter to people. And that is why uh, we invited uh, some very distinguished academics to help us craft a program of government, which we will be uh, coming out very soon, anchored on the Belis Kilos of uh, Isco Moreno, because there is a prototype, and prototype is Manila. Despite the pandemic, despite the fact that he's only been mayor for two and a half years, even if he has had experience of 18 years in the city council as councillor and vice mayor, uh, is called what can be done by a detailed and visionary leader. No? So nagawa niya itong mga to sa, sa Maynila, despite all the obstacles, kaya naman siguro itong gawin all over the country by the proper use of resources and with a plan. That plan we crafted together with several distinguished academics and of of course, other thinking heads. No. Throughout all of these, akase, I'm learning through everything. Uh, ang, ang theory ko is uh, people vote for their president by assessing their qualities in terms of one, competence, two, character, sometimes yung character na ta translate uh, or na, 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 na babaluktot into charisma. No, Arab had charisma, FPJ had charisma. And the third, and I think that's most important uh, through the years, is to show compassion. So three C's, competence, character, compassion. Pero ngayon, with the pandemic, merong added fourth C, and that is COVID. No? And that is the reason why we decided on Doc Willie Ong as our vice president. It would have been easy and Vice President Lenny was into these conversations to think of a political marriage, no? a marriage between someone who has good numbers, no? someone who is nationally known, someone who is a politician, seasoned politician, and Isco Moreno for the presidency. But we thought to convince people that we are serious about helping out in the COVID pandemic, no? Then we, talk, we thought of Doc Willie Ong, who originally we wanted to run in our slate for the Senate, but who we convinced to run for vice president. Because again, Manila is the prototype. Ang vice mayor ni Isko sa Manila uh, is uh, Dr. Hani Lacuna Pangan. No? So nakatulong si Dr. Hani. No? That is why in Manila, I think I, I, I can say this as a matter of fact, pinakamaganda ang response ng Manila sa pag, uh, pagsawata o pagkontrol ng infection ng COVID-19 sa Kamaynilaan. Even the building of instant building of a of a 200 330 bed COVID-19 hospital, no? Uh, to to be able to quickly respond. Bilis kilos palagi, no? Even the buying of medicines, which the DOH never bought, never even thought that was necessary. Manila was buying medicines early on because we knew, or Isco Moreno and Dr. Hani knew, that the Delta variant would invade the Philippines. No? So yung mga ganon, no? despite all that, ang dami niya pang nagawa sa housing, 
sa education, no? lahat ng mga estudyante sa public schools na bigyan ng tablets, lahat ng is ng uh, teachers sa public schools na bigyan ng uh, ng um, laptops and meron silang internet connectivity na provided also by the city. So, by imaginatively and uh, prudently using the resources of a city, imagine what could be done if that prudence that uh, transparency and that uh, imaginative, creative use of resources can be translated into the entire country. So that is the anchor of Isco Moreno's candidacy. That is why he is de determined to run. He is not restrained, unlike others. He is not yung, kunwari, tatakbo, kunwari hindi tatakbo, pero tatakbo pala. All, all these stupidities of substitution, no? wala yun, no? Kasi nga, Determined siya. He thinks he has a mission. He thinks he is properly equipped. No? And he has the, uh, the, the background as someone who grew in abject poverty, no? a street kid no? who knows how to survive despite the difficulties of life. Kaya siya tumatakbo presidente. Hindi dahil suportado siya nito, suportado siya noon, hindi dahil sa ano paman. Hindi dahil sa galit kung kanino man, hindi dahil sa uh, uh, pro-pro somebody or anti-somebody, but because he thinks the country needs a fresh face who knows where the country should go. So, ayun po ang uh, uh, Pia. Uh, I, I am op Actually, marami ako nililista habang nagsasalita yung ating mga resource persons. Eh, no? But uh, I know time is of the essence, so baka sa sa ano na lang, action na lumabas si mga yon. Thank you very much, Pia. Thank you very much, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the academy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Lito. You know, I, I hope everyone, uh, especially uh, mga students here, no, uh, young people, I hope everyone was really taking notes and paying very close attention to uh, this uh, man who calls himself a political technician, uh, because like he, uh, guy ng kwento niya, no? he has been with campaign since 1986. He has a very interesting, very long uh, uh, years of experience that many of us uh, can and have learned from. Uh, and uh, it was also good, uh, Sir Lito, to hear you talk about how, what you, uh, what you yourself uh, learned. And also good to, to hear you say <laughs> the stupidities of substitution. But anyway, I'm sure um, maraming pang lalabas uh, mamaya, pero yun nga, ang, ang Ang oras natin ang problema, but we'll, we'll try and squeeze everything in. So thank you so much, Sir Lito Banayo. Very good to hear. Kasi kanina narinig na natin si Barry about Lenny. Very good to hear from you, Sir Lito, about ISCO. Now, we're going to welcome uh, the Chief for Political Affairs from the Office uh, of Senator Grace Poe, Mr. J.Y. Uh, De La Rosa. Um, hindi naman po kayo magkamag-anak no, ni uh, Senator Bato, but I'm sure hindi. Hindi po, hindi po. <laughs> hindi po. Oo, so um, I'm sure you saw no, yung uh, dalawang previous presentation, si Barry for Lenny, si Sir Lito for Isko. O ngayon, ikaw naman. Sige, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Paul. Let me just uh, share my... Who is your boss supporting? Uh, I think I will be answering that <laughs> in my presentation map. Okay, go ahead. Okay, this is just a short presentation of a glimpse of ano ang itsura ng Senator Grace Poe campaign through the years. And uh, I am really lucky to present this along with um, political operations giant of my time and of course, I'm not. Ang mga millennial at uh, maswerte ako pinagkatiwalaan ako ni Senator Grace with his position. So let me just start. So basically, ang running joke sa aming opisina para kaming uh, congressman, mayor at governor because in every three years, we basically ran election. Tumakbo si Senator Grace in 2013 as uh, so a first-time senator and then we ran as president in 2016 and of course, a re-election senator in 2019. So now... In 2022, it's the first time actually that our team will not have an active role in election. And so naturally, everybody is asking, um, ano ang plano ni Senator Grace? Sino ang presidential na tutulungan ninyo at kaninong camp kayo papanik? Our answer to that question will be related to the kind of politics we have practiced and which we believe in. 
ever since we believe nang walang iwanan at lahat aangat. So basically, my story as uh, chief, the chief political officer of Senator Grace uh, started in 2019. That was really the first time when I held a political campaign commanding heights, at least on the political side. Uh, our mentality that uh, at that time is that we are the defending champion. Kami yung champion ng 2013 with uh, 20 million votes, a record-breaking uh, history ng uh, dami ng boto ng isang senador. And then, though we we lost in 2016, we focused more on painting na, hindi, kailangan sustain natin na tayo yung mag number one in the 2019 election. So, reality of our campaign is that we ran as independent in 2013, in 2016, and in 2019, and our financial resources are really small. And then, of course, yung team now, if you can see, it's just a ragtag team ng puro millennials and volunteers all over the country. Kaya nga yung mga nakakasama namin media outfits nagugulat, yung kasama nila sa sorti ng Luzon, yun din yung kasama nila sa Mindanao. Kaya by April and May, Medyo zombie na yung mga staff namin dahil nga kami-kami lang yung nagpapatakbo ng election. But as you can see, here in the map of 2013, we're able to rank first on the dark blue areas in the Philippines. The blue areas are uh, the areas that we rank second and the light blue is the areas that we, we rank third. And in 2016 elections, we were able to maintain those areas at least. Pero syempre, iba yung election at that time. Uh, dahil nga one-on-one -on -one yun instead of electing 12. And in uh, 2019 elections, except some parts of Mindanao, we were able to maintain uh, rank uh, number one in the areas in our Bailey Weeks uh, second and third. This is despite the fact na compared doon sa ibang mga tumatakbo na senatoriable, eh medyo wala kaming uh, gaanong pera, wala kaming partido, at wala kaming makinarya. So what we did in all those years that we ran is that we crafted talking points for Senator Grace Poe centered on her legislative record and her legislative plans after the elections. But these pointers were all rooted in her values, of course, as the daughter of the king of FPJ and as an independent senator. Parang ano, nagpapatakbo kami ng movie sequel. Still faithful to her core values, but also representing an evolution of who she is. So basically, our concentration since then is talking to different organizations, different groups, uh, sectoral groups, civil society organization, POs, NGOs, and grassroots. It, special ano eh, uh, task yun sa amin sa political department dahil hindi nagpo-kompromiso si Senator Grace. Kada pumunta kami sa mga areas, kailangan nakakausap niya yung mga tao. In most areas nga, mas, uh, mas madalas na kinakausap namin yung mga grassroots uh, people kaysa pumupunta kami sa politiko, pupunta kami sa mga munisipyo, which is kind of challenging on our part. So, Basically, with uh, those two criteria, we customized her talking points based on where she was going. So, uh, yeah. So, for example, we go to Zambales. We talk to fisher folks, most especially those that are affected by the West Philippine Sea issues. If we go now naman halimbawa sa Kabanaduan, which is the tricycle capital of the Philippines, uh, we talk about providing social benefits to tricycle drivers. When we go naman to Palenque Runs, ito yung medyo challenging sa amin kasi usually when you go on campaigns, you just handshake yung mga tindera, yung mga bibili sa Palenque. Pero si Senator Grace would like to have at least a town hall meeting mismo doon sa Palenque. And gladly, pagka nagsiset up naman kami ng town hall, eh, umuupo naman yung mga tao so tumitigil yung tumitigil yung buhay ng mga tao na nandoon sa Palenque. And we usually talked about, um, for example, revising the SSS law, specifically or customi uh, customizing payment schemes for the informal uh, in informal employed. And of course, yung pinakalakas ni Senator Grace ever since 2013, 2016, and 2019, the youth voters. Uh, 
All right. Uh, I think we have a bit of a problem. Did we did we lose uh, JY? Okay, na mute. Oh, na mute na nga siya sa akin. I cannot hear him anymore. Uh, all right. What are we gonna do? We're gonna wait for. Oh no, he's back. JY. Naka mute ka pa rin. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Sige, yeah. sige. Medyo na wala. I'm sorry po. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so again, going back. So in other words, uh, despite na wala po kaming machinery and campaign financing, uh, we were able to maintain all those organizations that were able to organize from 2013, 2016. And sila yung naging lakas na amin ng 2019 elections. And so... Uh, and most especially, pagka wala namang mga basic sectors, for example, uh, doon sa area, o kaya malakas yung uh, representasyon ng mga sektor, most, uh, most especially doon sa mga highly urbanized cities at saka malalaking mga probinsya, si Senator Grace talagang uupuan niya yung transport. For example, this picture is yung mga taal mayors natin. So we really specialize on consulting the grassroots and uh, local government units uh, dahil wala naman kaming pera para mag-launch uh, ng malalaking sorties compared to other politicians. So in 2019 um, election, so in 2020, I think you're not screen shared. You're not, you're not seeing my screen. Oh, we can't see your slides. Ayan. Okay, we're good. We're good. Kaya nga po talagang pinaglalaban ni Senator Grace ang mabilis na internet connection <laughs> <laughs> dahil sa mga ganitong, ganitong mga problema. And so, uh, with that, kahit wala nga kaming pera at wala kaming makinarya, we were able to surpass our votes in um, 2013, which uh, is 20 million. So, 22 million yung boto namin. Though we fell short by shy 2.8 million to Senator Cynthia Villar, but if you're going to compare our, our campaign uh, movement as to her, na syempre meron siyang partido, maraming pera and all, eh, medyo incomparable. So, after noon, after ng election, uh, we made sure in 2013 and 2019 that lahat po nung inikot naming mga sektor, kung ano po yung pinaglalaban nila, eh, reflected po ito doon sa mga batas na pinafile ni Senator Grace. For example, when we go to fisher folks, uh, we filed Pantawid Pambangka Bill which gives fuel subsidy to our fisher folks and then uh, tulong kabataan, for example, sa Agricultura Act na tumutulong sa ating mga kabataan na inclined into agriculture. We also filed, uh, filed the Universal Social Pension Act for our senior citizen, the Co Coconut Farmers Industry Trust Fund, uh, the Alternative Learning System Act, of course, for our out-of-school youth, and Doktor Para Sa Bayan, para doon sa mga kababayan natin na gustong pumasok sa profession na ito na walang pera. And of course, uh, Senator Grace is also one of those senators that are adamant in support, supporting Bayanihan 1 and 2 na largely tumulong sa atin ngayon upang, upang harapin ang pandemya. And We've also not only legislative measure, but we're able to do initiatives and advocacy program that is reflected to what we have uh, consolidated during our grassroots consultation. Like for example, we did itong uh, Young Farmers Program. Uh, ito po maganda kasi uh, nabalikan po namin lahat ng kabataan sa mga at least limang probinsya hanggang munisipyo kung saan nakapag-train po kami ng mga kabataan down municipal level para mag-engage sila into farming for food security. At pagkatapos po ng training natin, mag-uuwi sila ng mga training kits, mga baboy for example, and chickens, para makapag-start up po sila ng business. We've also supported the 3 billion service contracting in 2020. In 2020, kung saan tumulong po ito largely sa mga jeepney drivers natin at bus drivers dahil sila yung unang nawalan po ng uh, kita noong pandemya. Pero sadly, uh, hindi po na utilize yung buong pondo ito ng administrasyon ito na isa sa mga pinakasinaman ng loob ni Senator Grace. And then the 500 million for construction of green spaces and bike lanes. And of course, lastly, yung anti-EPAL provision natin sa bawat proyekto ng gobyerno dahil karamihan 
well, marami sa ating mga politiko yung ginagamit pa yung pandemya para i-push yung mga personal agenda nila. And then of course, you know, as we all knew it, coronavirus struck the country. The Philippines, as we knew it, disappeared. Through our civic arm, the FPJ Panday Bayanian Foundation, we provided aid to those at the front lines and those who had lost their livelihood. Ito yung special challenge po namin ngayong pandemic. Uh, gearing towards 2022, mag-e-election. And at the same time, uh, in-specialize nga po namin yung grassroots development. Eh, nung nag-pandemia, katakot-takot po syempre yung sulat at pagingin ng tulong ang, ang ipinaabuot sa aming opisina. Kaya buong pandemya ng 2020 at 2021, uh, as you know, Senator Grace, hindi naman siya known for politicking. Eh, pero busy po ang aming opisina na tumulong sa ating mga kababayan. We're able to give our frontliners, uh, most especially in the medical field, uh, PPEs, uh, nagbigay po kami ng mga medical laboratories, nagbigay po kami ng kabuhayan actually sa alternative na kabuhayan para sa ating mga jeepney drivers. Uh, nagbigay din kami ng turong sa mga delivery riders natin, yung mga fisher folks, lalong-lalo na yung mga malalapit dito sa NPR, sa, sa Nabotas, Malabon, and Binangonan, uh, yung mga naapektuhan ng pandemya, binigyan din po namin natin ng ayuda. And uh, hindi lang po yun, uh, during our pandemic season, medyo inulan din po tayo at binagyan ng katakot-takot. And, uh, and ako personally, I admire na kahit nagpapandemya at marami pong nagkakasakit at that time, Senator Grace really took some time to go out and go to the areas of uh, grounds to mga typhoon victims to give the uh, ano, relief uh, goods herself. Uh, pagkatapos po ng pati mga police enforcers po natin doon sa mga checkpoint areas, binigyan din po natin ng tulong. And we gave a lot of financial assistance from the Zone Visayas in Mindanao, lalong lalo na po yung mga kababayan natin na nawalan ng trabaho during pandemic. And of course, uh, ito yung isa sa specialty ng office. We were able to give, uh, we launched a scholar ng bayan, FPJ scholar ng bayan, which gave scholarship assistance to at least 3,000 students nationwide from 2020. So ito lang a very quick stat of what we did ng 2020 and 2021. So the question is, na dito na tayo sa 2022, so Senator Grace Poe is not running. Uh, hindi po siya nag-file ng any COCs hanggang October 8. So the question is, what will her role be uh, this election? Well, first, she wants to help vo uh, voters make an informed choice. Uh, magmula po 2021, January 2021, nag-roll out na po kami ng first-time voters at voters' education all over the country. Uh, Minake sure po na isa sa mga minumungkahi at isa sa mga advocacy at inisyatibo ni Senator Grace ay ma-inform lahat ng ating mga botante kung sino ang tamang iboto. She also wants to help uh, keep the 2022 race agenda based not to devolve in name-calling and mudslinging. Uh, kilala naman natin si Senator Grace na ganito, 2013, 2016, and 2019. Yun nga, kaya lugi kami bawat election dahil una, hindi talaga politiko si ma'am. So hindi siya talaga yung type na naninira at ayaw niya yun. In fact, pag kahit kami nag engage sa social media ng mudslinging, napapagalitan din po kami. Kaya... Yon, ang ending, yung mga sumasagot sa amin sa social media platforms, mga organic accounts, dahil hindi rin niya sinusuportahan yung mga troll accounts. And she wants to make sure that whoever is elected will focus on two things. Number one, living with the COVID-19 pandemic and rebuilding our economy. We believe that whoever becomes president in 2022 should have built back better as item number one in their agenda. So just to finish this, um, alam ko yung mga communications major natin, of course, knows this, na of course, tayo ang social media capital of the world. Tayo yung may pinakamatagal na ini-spend on social media around 4 hours and 15 minutes as compared to doon sa 2 hours and 25 minutes global average. And as a millennial myself, uh, nakikita ko naman kung paano naapektuhan ng social media platforms yung mundo natin ngayon. Pero kung ang election natin ay magre-revolve on different social media platforms, we see, to, we see na mas importante pa din na bigyan natin ng boses yung nasa grassroots level as she always say. Ito yung kadalasang mga Pilipinong hindi natin naririnig tuwing election at umaasang mabubu, ma, mababago ang kanilang buhay kada pagkas nila ng balota. Uh, isang beses na pag-discussan namin na 
kung social media platform talaga ang center na gagamitin ngayong eleksyon, eh bakit halimbawa yung mga estudyante natin uh, sa online school, sa Department of Education, yung mga private and public school natin, uh, pinipili nilang mag-modular class instead of online. Kasi una-una, bukod sa uh, kahit na tayo yung may pinakamahabang oras na ini-spend sa social media, tayo naman yung may pinakamabagal na internet at pinakamahal, isa sa mga pinakamahal na interconne- uh, uh, interconnectivity sa mundo. So basically, Senator Grace wants, you know, if she is being asked bakit hindi siya tatakbo kasi naniniwala siya na as a legislator until 2025, mas makakatulong po siya ng lubos, lalong-lalo na ngayong pandemic upang isolve yung mga problema natin. Uh, may scrutinize niya rin po yung mga batas na pinapasa at at the same time, may scrutinize niya rin yung mga polisiya ng administrasyon para po sa mga tao. Kaya yun po, maraming maraming salamat at uh, sabi nga ni Senator Grace, walang iwanan lahat ang Thank you. Um, yeah, JY, did I miss out uh, who she supporting? Well, <laughs> sabi, mo, sabi, nga, sabi mo you will answer it in your presentation. Baka obliquely mo sinasabi. Hindi <laughs> mo na kasi. Kasi yeah. dahil... <laughs> Ang sinasabi nga po lagi ni ano ni Senator Grace kung ano po yung agenda ng mga tumatakbo eh sa ngayon po hindi pa naman po pinipresent ng mga presidential natin talagang yung platforms and agenda nila sa gobyerno at alam naman po natin si Senator Grace and when the time comes and with proper discernment uh, you know you know my boss eh. so susuportahan niya po yung agenda na best na magso ng problema natin ngayong pandemic Mm, okay, no, kasi sinagot ko po, baka mangalag po ako ng trabaho. <laughs> <laughs> Look out for all these clues. No? We were trying to read between the lines. But uh, yeah, okay. so kailan yung announcement na yun? Tomorrow? Uh, hindi ko po alam. <laughs> o oh, sige. Well, uh, okay. Well, thank you so much, uh, J.Y. De La Rosa, um, uh, with, with the... Uh, well, Chief for Political Affairs of the Office of Senator Grace Poe. Um, you know, I, I, Kanina, I said that uh, uh, I hope you were paying very close attention and taking notes uh, nung nagsasalita si Sir Lito Banay, but let me qualify that and say I hope you were all listening very closely to every single one of our speakers because this is not just an ordinary webinar. This is a masterclass on Philippine politics. And uh, at this time, uh, I'm going to Uh, say that please stay for the Q&A session. At the same time, please, can we please call back uh, all our uh, speakers this morning, Dr. El Atienza, Dr. Ronald Mendoza, Dr. Dennis Cornacion, Attorney Barry Gutierrez, Sir Lito Banayo, uh, Attorney Tony Abad, and of course, J.Y. De La Rosa. So please just uh, keep your cameras open. I think uh, we want your cameras open. Uh, while our speakers are switching on those cameras, let's share the results of our Mentimeter poll results. So, okay. Uh, kanina, no, ang tanong natin yung first question, kung walang face-to-face campaigning, ano ang inyong primary source of information uh, tungkol sa mga uh, kandidato and, well, the runaway winners, social media websites, 91 votes, uh, pang- pumapangalawa pa rin ang online media with 51 na po <laughs> pumapangatlo ang uh, traditional media, TV, radio, newspaper at ang word of mouth, 6 votes. and one vote for messaging apps, Viber groups. All right, that, uh, tapos yung uh, mga, uh, nayak na ata ako, but um, we move on to our word cloud. Uh, our question was, what campaign issues are important to you? So we asked you to just type in uh, those uh, words. And the biggest words here, kasi we said na yung size niya no, will depend on how many people are typing that in. Um, economy, corruption, education, public health. Uh, I'll just choose... Two people from the panel, just to very, very quickly uh, do a commentary on uh, the results of the Mentimeter. Uh, who can who can speak? Sir Lito, were you going to uh, say something? Yes. Uh, with regard to campaign issues, no, this more or less parallels what we get from our own research, except that um, it looks like it's basically the economy first. Second, the pandemic response. Well, when you talk of the economy, you're also talking about uh, yung, ano, no, um, uh, joblessness, which has been uh, high, which was caused by the pandemic. 
plus uh, high prices no? that that is coming up again because the inflation rate has uh, really come, gone up health is a very public health health these are all part of the pandemic response no? these are the major top of mind issues now when you come to the the platforms that are used for communication no? um while it is true that our audience says 91% to social media platforms uh, you have to again distinguish where that is coming from. Kung young people, yes. Kung senior citizens, and ano, hindi pa. No? Number two, all urban population, yes. Social media is very important. Pero sa rural population, they use social media for chismis, no? for celebrity chismis, for telenovelas, and all that. So when you craft a campaign strategy, you have to slice it very thinly. Kaya ang ginagawa ko lagi na research is kung ba sa city scan, you do 126 tests. You know, you rely on SWS and Pulse Asia who do quarterly or monthly surveys. You have to do your own research. Uh, that that is something I learned from Sergio Smeña, by the way, Senator Sergio Smeña, when we did the Pinoy, uh, Pinoy campaign in uh, 2010. No? We really did very thin slices. Pati probinsya, probinsya, pinag-aaralan namin yun. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Lito. Uh, one more member of the panel just to, to comment on the Mentimeter results. Walang may gusto, ha? <laughs> okay. Um, well, thank you, everyone. <coughs> Our fun quiz. Uh, we'll also be having a post-test later. Naalala ko yung post-test ng grade school, uso yun. Uh, just to assess if, uh, you know, there has been an increase in knowledge from this webinar. Well, if you were paying attention, uh, dapat meron talaga. At yan ang dapat yung paghandaan. Mag-review po kayo. Nagbibiro lang po ako. At this point, we're going to entertain some questions uh, from the audience. So I'm going to go to the Q&A uh, box here. And, okay. Teka. Um, I'm just going to choose at random. Huh? There is a damn questions from anonymous attendees. Sino kaya ito? <laughs> For Dr. Concepcion, what is the impact? Ah, okay. What is the impact, positive or negative, of targeting, criticizing, bashing other candidates? Dr. Concepcion? Ay, Dr. Concepcion or Coronacion? Dr. Coronacion. Um, well, yes. Yeah, so, uh, well, one clear impact is that it's going to, you know, it's going to defeat the purpose of, uh, you know, uh, having a, uh, you know, free engagement between the candidates and the and the supporters or as well as the voters. Kasi dapat sana malayang makapag uh, communicate ng mga ideas at uh, platform of government yung mga kandidato at kanilang mga supporters. Pero kapag may mga ganyan mga bashers, medyo naantala ho eh. O at the same time na uh, naistorbo yung dapat sana ay uh, you know the goal is to be able to convey the messages of, uh, from from the candidates going to the uh, voters and the voters going to the candidates. But then again, uh, since uh, hindi na hubago yan yung mga bashers, I think uh, we have found a way to you know to uh, cope with this kind of uh, with this kind of uh, engagement mm -hmm. thank you thank you sir um to spokesman uh, barry uh, gutierrez for lenny do you think and this question from romwell sumage do you think millennial youth perspective of strategic campaign uh, or mobilization is an edge kaya na ba nitong talunin ang mga traditional uh, sorry or old political uh, tacticians. Ingo, it's not. It's not. It's not, a question, it's not a question of age. It's a question of effectivity and uh, and responsiveness. Um, di ko alam kung tanong is geared towards is 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 it geared towards saying that is the younger voter segment millennials uh, outweighing already the older voter segment, or is he saying more modern approaches are now outweighing the old approaches? Uh, but anyway, I'll answer both. Mas madami bata. That's definitely true. And uh, key demographic talaga yung, uh, well, people below 40 years old. They comprise the majority of the population. But of course, age is can be a misleading demographic. Eh. Kasi 
people between 40 year old uh, is a very varied field, di ba? May urban, may rural, may professional, may hindi professional, may sudyante, may hindi. So, um, that's not, uh, di ba? kung ang commonality lang ay edad, that's not enough. Uh, the challenge really is to be able to identify segments within that broader segment that you can actually target messages uh, to. Uh, with respect to approaches, well, tingin ko naman clear from all the speakers uh, earlier, and they are far more expert at this uh, than I am, that although there will be probably bigger room for more modern approaches like social media and tech-mediated uh, uh, campaigning, uh, there will always be room for yung mga mas old school methods of campaigning. In fact, in my own presentation kanina, binanggit ko that I really am convinced that uh, traditional campaigning methods like face-to-face -face, uh, conversations and visibility uh, campaigns uh, on the ground uh, will actually have a, uh, a renewed emphasis uh, going into uh, the challenging and unique uh, atmosphere that we are going into for 2022. Thank you, Barry. There was a similar question from a Rhoda Campilan. Uh, in your own opinion, are the youth going to be the game changer in these elections? Uh, answered already by uh, Barry. I'm going to try very quickly to go through these. Um, and damning questions from anonymous attendee. I wonder what your real name is, Mr. Anonymous, Mr. or Miss Anonymous Attendee. But anyway, uh, there was one question here for um, uh, for Sir Lito Banayo, and I'm going to look for that. But uh, while we're looking for that, nako, bakit gumagalaw itong chat box ng Q and A? <laughs> uh, anyway, let me. Uh, uh, Okay, ito. this is from James Patrick Cruz. Campaign strategists have been grooming politicians to appear attractive and appeal to the public. In social media language or millennial term, it's like a it's like catfish. How can Filipinos not fall victim uh, to this curated image presented by politicians online? Who, who, who wants to take that question? That's very interesting. Panelists? Yes, is there a panelist who wants to take the question? Can you unmute yourself? Hi, ma'am. Yeah, uh -oh. yeah uh, sige. I'll try to answer uh, this. Of course, uh, style talaga, even before the pandemic, na uh, the uh, campaign strategies create uh, images. Of course, based din yan sa research and information nila, ano yung mukhang hinahanap ng mga voters, kanino sila nag -a identify So, may mga images na, uh, halimbawa, galing sa uh, very simple background o kaya... Uh, galing sa uh, progresibong background iba-iba yung ano yung mga images na uh, pinepresent uh, based sa uh, uh, parang basa rin ng uh, campaign strategy sa ano yung hinahanap ng mga tao pwedeng tama pwedeng nag-approximate pwede ring hindi ang papano natin i-check yon titingnan talaga natin ano yung background ng mga candidates kung uh, nare-reflect doon sa narrative na ipinepresent sa atin sa mga kampanya and doon makakatulong syempre yung mga uh, uh, may kakayahan na mag-fact checking at mag-present ng mga information and research about the candidates and of course, um, nakita naman natin sa mga nakaraang kampanya rin, hindi lahat ng mga curated images at saka mga slogans ay bumebenta. If you recall, di ba, dati yung itanim si Pichay sa Senado, hindi bumenta, di ba? Parang akala nila cute pero hindi hindi siya effective. So minsan nagkakamali din sila ng basa sa ano yung hinahanap ng mga tao and Action ng mga tao about the candidates themselves. But the facts are also important, of course. Thank you very much, doc, uh, Dr. Ella. Uh, this question uh, also, again, from anonymous attendee for Sir Lito Banayo. I found it finally uh, in this uh, uh, QA chat box. Uh, after the hashtag withdraw isco trended, Isko Moreno slammed VP Lenny by calling her a fake leader due to her association with the Liberal Party, despite her running as an independent candidate, which is what I asked Barry Kanina, no? why independent kung LP naman? Uh, as is 
Trump's political technician, do you think his remarks will have a negative effect on his political campaign? Or in a sense, will he lose voters because of what he said? Uh, Sir Lito? Maybe, maybe. Um, but then again, I, I'd like to explain that. No? It was a raw reaction on the part of uh, Isco Moreno because he felt that it was a betrayal of trust. No? Uh, I will not go into specifics too much on that because uh, as everyone knows, the vice president kept saying she was not going to run, that she just wanted to be an honest broker. And uh, we believed her. So when that happened and uh, everything seemed to be not spontaneous, as Barry said, but something uh, planned uh, throughout, no? medyo nasaktan si Isko. Uh, kaya nagkaroon ng ganong, ganong uh, reaction. No? But uh, uh, lessons learned, no? uh, especially. Ano, so you will see in the, the past days that we'd like to move forward. Uh, forget that. No? Uh, yun nga, me, it, it really is a betrayal of trust. I cannot break confidences because I've sat on some of the meetings. No? So I hope you understand. No? It wouldn't be proper for me to to break confidences uh, that would de demonstrate why uh, Isco Moreno felt that it was a betrayal of trust. I will leave it at that. Pwede ba? Mabilis lang. Ayoko nang pumasok dun sa ibang as, uh, sinabi niya. No? But just to clarify one thing, wala akong sinabing plan. In fact, I said earlier, we were surprised uh, by the outpouring of support. And I think the Vice President was very candid, was very clear uh, on her own uh, discernment process and what she had to go through uh, in her speech last Thursday, including saying that sa totoo lang, wala naman akong balak tumakbo. Eh. She actually said that. Uh, and you know, it was only after uh, events uh, evolved that she actually came to the difficult decision uh, to present herself as a candidate for, for president. But I agree. I have only the res the, the highest respect for uh, Sir Lito. We've worked together before uh, in, uh, in, in previous campaigns. I know how much of a veteran and uh, an honorable person he is. So like him, I will uh, not speak anymore about yung, ano ba yung mga pinag-usapan in the past. Sinabi naman yung mismo ni VP yan eh. Uh, Tapos na yan, di ba? Out of respect to uh, sino yung mga kausap ko, ayoko nang uh, pag-usapan ano yung mga detalye ng mga naging conversations na yan. Ang ganda, ang ganda naman ng uh, diskusyon dito. No? We should also have pala, hindi lang debate ng kandidato, pati yung debate ng political technician at spokesperson. But that's another uh, uh, one. <laughs> another topic for another day. But anyway, um, alright, uh, we're gonna uh, go now to the... Uh, uh, ah, no, we have uh, just uh, enough time for one last question. So we have to make this a fast round. And by the way, no, for those who sent in questions, uh, what the organizers na po will do and what we usually do is yung mga questions meant for the for which particular speaker, uh, I, I, I hand over na lang po sa kanila no? so that kahit pa paano makarating sa kanila. Okay? Um, so uh, th this uh, uh, last question for a fast round for everyone on the panel uh, since face-to-face -face engagements will be limited and most everyone will be integrating a social media campaign, sabi nga ni uh, Dr. Cornacion Ganina, no? the, 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 the new battleground, uh, as part of the strategy, let me ask you this. How are you going to reach voters who are not on social media or uh, are in areas that are not electrified? And, and don't say na, ipap, na palalagyan nyo ng kuryente yan. Ha? Or have frequent power outages? Or and or have slow or no internet connections. Let's begin with Attorney Tony Abad. Attorney Abad, you're still here. Is Attorney Abad here? Yes. Uh, yes. I'm still here. Uh, well, I can just say that our discussion is enlightening and did not descend to attacking a politician with unfriendly or bitter words. We did not attack an opponent's character. We did not appeal to feelings or prejudices rather than the intellect. In other words, we were not arguing ad hominem. That's all. Thank you, sir. We agree, uh, well, kayo, agreeing to disagree, but uh, not being disagreeable, I suppose. Um, JY De La Rosa. Um, 
Ito po yung ma- mga naging challenges namin in 2016 and 2019 uh, in, in election time kasi nga yung wide reach on social media because we don't have enough money to really engage on ads and uh, really spend in advertising on social media platform. But what we did in 2016 and 2019 and uh, itong 2022 maganda din gawin na parang nawala si JY ulit. JY, na mute ka. Ayan. Talagang kailangan na na mute ka na lang. Kailangan na pabilisin ang internet na wawala. Hindi kasi, de, siguro <laughs> dapat na share mo na kung sino susportahan ni ni Senator Gray. <laughs> hindi ka mamute. Kaya nga po siguro na wawala yung internet connection ko para hindi ko po talaga yun masabi. <laughs> Gaya nga po yung sinabi ko kanina, mas magandang bumababa. Ganun po ang ginawa namin ng lahat ng election. It starts in social media, group chats, and all that. And then our advanced teams, our political department, actually, nag-spend ng two to three days doon before yung event ni ma'am to really organize uh, the sectors and do consultation. At sila rin po yung sumasali ng sorties natin. Though, makikita naman po natin uh, in the latest SWS and Pulse Asia survey, kung saan po tinitingnan ng mga Pilipino yung kinukuha nila yung news ngayon. Though mataas ang social media reach natin, champion pa rin naman ang TV at radio. So, kaya buhay na buhay pa rin ang tri media natin. Kasi nga, Marami pa rin po sa ating mga lugar, raro sa rural places, ang hindi talaga po inaabot ng internet. Kaya nga si Senator Grace, always, yung mga advocacy and initiative namin, uh, nilalakad po talaga namin down grassroots level. Kaya medyo haggard lang ng konti. Pero pagbalik mo naman ng Maynila and when you craft advocacy and initiatives na talagang reflective down the ground, eh, napakaganda at napakasarap sa pakiramdam. Sabi nga ng isang uh, participante, eh, panahon na para palakasin na natin ang internet. We hear you. <laughs> We empathize. Okay. <laughs> so the question pa rin is uh, about itong social media, no? how to reach voters uh, who are not on social media, etc. Sir Lito Banayo? Ah, yeah, PM. Um, unang-una, nagpapasalamat ako doon sa mga presenters natin. No? Nela Tienza, Coronacion, Dr. Rondosa. Ang dami katutunan no, sa inyong mga presentation na magagamit sa kampanya ni Isko Moreno. Uh, of course, yung pinag-uusapan natin na sa SOCMED, yung use ng SOCMED, alam mo, hindi ako expert sa SOCMED. So the first thing I did was to hire very young people. Not hire, most of them are volunteers. No? Very young people, really. Uh, pwedeng apo ko na yung iba. Pwedeng anak ko yung iba no? in terms of age difference. No? So napakalaking tulong sila. They, they're educating me at the same time. Because every election not be viewed in the same template. Bawat election, iba-iba ang, pag, ang, uh, ang, uh, strate- ang strategy, iba-iba ang... Uh, because you have to look at the public mood, you have to look at the issues that matter to people, and you have to look at the qualities of your candidate. And these have to match with both the issues and the mood of the, the public mood. No? Uh, pabago-bago yan. And ngayon nga, nakita na with the restrictions of health protocols, napaka-challenging itong huling, itong election na ito na 2022. Um, definitely, there, there's one thing though I'd like to point out lang. Dati-dati at kanina, sinabi ko, hindi masyadong mahalaga yung, yung influence ng local politicians versus yung messaging mo at yung communications mo which are done through the mediums of quad media no SOCMED plus the traditional tri media radio broadcast i mean tv broadcast and uh, and uh, print no pero ngayon ngayon and this is something that uh, i i believe is going to be important one napakaraming mga local candidates na walang kalaban you have to figure that you have to factor that in pangalawa Lalo na doon sa rural areas, the influence of the local candidates will matter this time. So yung sinasabing political machinery, regardless of the fact that all these parties are really flags of convenience used by political personalities, magig- magkakaroon ng mas mahalagang impact ngayon. Yung politiko sa local ngayon, makaka- magkakaroon ng malaking impluensya doon sa boto na especially in the rural areas and the impoverished areas in this country. Thank you. 
Thank you, Sir Lito. Um, just a reminder, uh, we're just answering Muna the, this last question about uh, how to reach voters who are not on social media and meron pa po kayong mga final words, okay? So let's go to uh, Barry Gutierrez. I'll keep it short kasi nagkuto naman ng iba eh. Um, well, you know, it's really just a realization that social media is not the be-all and end-all and not the only arena for uh, conversations in this election. One of the things na we're trying to encourage, at kaya ako nakapink na yun, di ba, is Pink Wednesdays. And Pink Wednesdays is not just about wearing pink or putting pink on uh, in front of your house or wherever, but really uh, undertaking to have a conversation with at least one person why uh, you are supporting uh, VP Lenny for 2022. And I think that yung gan mga ganitong klaseng initiatives are, is one example of how you can use yung social media reach to actually transition into an offline uh, campaign. And I think that the offline campaigns in this election will actually be uh, very important uh, because of uh, the limitations of the pandemic and because to a certain extent, meron na rin ano ba, saturation sa social media, yung, uh, yung, yung perception ng mga tao that there's so much uh, fake news uh, going about that a lot of the things you see are curated, uh, it's curated authenticity, uh, that has an effect. So many of the conversations that have to take place will be outside of that uh, medium and uh, I think uh, important yun sa, mag sa magiging election na ito. So ano ang pink sa Tagalog and it's not fuchsia? <laughs> rosas, di ba? May mas malalim pa, pero rosas ang ginagamit namin. <laughs> may red, may white, ikaw naman. Anyway, thank you, uh, Barry. Dr. Dennis Coronacion. Well, uh, bilang uh, PPSA President po, nagpapasalamat ako sa inyo at napasali ako dito. Uh, kasi nga po, uh, ito ay isang paraan, you know, by, by being with the uh, you know, with the media practi practitioners and the political, so-called political technicians, uh, this is a learning experience for us uh, kasi kami ho sa academe uh, nababalidate lang namin ng theories through the data na nakukuha namin sa aming pag-aaral and this is one way of uh, uh, you know learning from those who are really working at the ground lalo na yung mga uh, people behind the scene yung mga political technicians natin so we are thankful for that now to answer your question um, actually yung sinabi ko kanina sa presentation ko is that the uh, the use of uh, uh, social media uh, during the uh, new normal is not going to render obsolete yung pong mga traditional methods natin. It may take a primary role uh, you know, in terms of uh, uh, building up the image of the candidate and reaching out to the voters. Pero at the same time, we also acknowledge the fact na yung mga much-touted ng mga benefits and advantages may also have a well, bago pa siya. I mean, kahit nandiyan na matagal na nandiyan yung internet, pero yung social media itself is uh, something new pagdating sa larangan ng pangampanya. So, uh, may mga shortcomings pa yan. And kung ano may shortcomings ng social media campaigning at saka online campaigning, will definitely be uh, addressed by the traditional methods. Gaya nga ng sinabi ni na Sir Kanina, Sir Lito Banayo, and Attorney Barry, uh, may mga lugar na hindi pa nararating, uh, wala pang Wi-Fi access or internet access. So geographically, uh, hindi lang one challenge ay nasa geogra sa geography, pati rin sa age groups. Kapag uh, yung mga senior citizens po natin, medyo nahihirapan na sila gumamit ng social media at ng uh, internet. Uh, at pati rin po yung, ano, yung, bawa, yung across yung socioeconomic uh, classes, may mga sections po tayo ng population natin na walang pambili ng smartphones at wala rin pambayad ng, ng data, mobile, mobile phone data at uh, internet subscription. So kung ano man po yung mga pagkukulang, uh, deficiencies ng online campaigning, maaring mapunan ng traditional method of campaigning. Opo, yun, yun lang ang uh, sasabi ko. Thank you, Dr. Dennis Coronacion. Uh, speaking of traditional media, isisingit ko na talaga to. It's pagkakataon ko na um, I, I have a standing uh, uh, pending invite uh, for a one-on-one -on -one interview because traditional media pinag-usapan with uh, Isko. Hi, Sir Lito. And with uh, VP Lenny. Hi, Barry. Please take note. Soon. Okay, thank you. Dr. Ronald Mendoza, kayo naman po. Thank you, Pia, and, and thank you to our colleagues who joined today. Um, I, I want to thank everyone for their presentations, for sharing their thoughts. I, 
I surely learned a lot from from this discussion. I'm uh, honestly, I'm a little out of my element because I'm an economist. I always get tagged as a political scientist, but I'm not. Uh, I, I like to hang out with the political scientists and the political strategists. That that's just about the extent of my expertise. And then I also do research on dynasties. So I guess my parting thought uh, for for today is. Uh, I think this election will be very, very historic and important for us. Uh, I think uh, speaking to many colleagues in the private sector, they feel that this can actually define this decade. Uh, and so there is much at stake uh, in terms of the leader that we will be getting as our country is uh, supposed to be com coming out of pandemic, hopefully soon. Uh, but I do see from our discussion tensions you know, between the new and the old the traditional versus um, new forms of campaigning, evidence-based, data-based, uh, between emotion and cognition. So see, Prof. Tony talked about his pride that we all kept our emotions in check. And yet I think emotions will surely dictate part of the result of this election. Uh, we're in crisis right now. Many have lost their jobs. Ang dami pong gutom, ang dami batang hindi makabalik ng skwelahan. Surely hindi lang po yan pag-iisipan kundi mararamdaman na maraming Pilipino. So palagi ko po yan po rin yung mag-i-inform ng strategy ng maraming mga pinuno natin na magsisikap na ma-elect sa 2022. And then my final point is, uh, and, and uh, this is a little bit of hope on my part, that this could be a historic election also in terms of dynasties versus upstarts, dynasties versus dynasty slayers, because we're getting any number of children of uh, politicians trying to again vie for the highest office in the land, uh, when in fact uh, the evidence has shown that uh, this doesn't really lead to development, uh, and this is empirical evidence, po, not my not my personal opinion. So, so I, I would really like to see upstarts, young politicians, alternative uh, leaders um, emerge, not just at the national level, but hopefully at the local level also. Parami pong dynasty slayer din ng 2019, so bakapu dumami pa this coming. Uh, 2022. So this is something to work for, not just to hope for. And, and surely that's uh, hopefully a message for the young people. Thank you, Dr. Cornachon. Uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Men Dean Mendoza. <laughs> sorry. Um, you may final words, pa tayo, brief final words, mamaya. but anyway, um, maybe we can call you a political economist, uh, perhaps, but uh, another topic for another day. Dr. Ella Atienza, kayo po, uh, just to answer the question about how to reach voters who are not on social media and given all our internet uh, challenges. Thank you, Pia, for that question. And uh, kung pagbabasihan natin, uh, may COVID man o wala, may internet, social media, or wala, every vote counts. Kasi yun yung basihan natin bakit tayo merong eleksyon. It's not just an exercise that we do regularly. Panahon ito kung saan mas mapapatingkad natin yung uh, uh, bottom-up uh, functions ng elections for accountability, legitimacy, and uh, uh, people becoming the centerpiece of uh, of the political process. But it's also an opportunity for voter education. So, sisigundahan ko yung sinabi ni Sir Lito na importante ang... Uh, networking ng mga national candidates uh, with local politicians pero sana hindi lang kasi nakikita po natin di ba ng ang trend last uh, in previous elections may mga tumatalon diyan kahit uh, formally nag-commit sila sa mga kandidato uh, dadalhin nila sa local level uh, tumatalon sila so dapat mat matibay ang mga networks with local politicians na mga national campaigns and candidates pero importante rin ang volunteers and grassroots at the local level kung saan ang labanan ay hindi sa social media kundi yung kahit may mga limited may mga limitations may mga restrictions dahil sa health protocols dahil sa pandemic importante yung mas creative na uh, pakikitungo at sabi ko rin kanina the personal is political papano yung mga kampanya na national ay madadala at the local level at relevant dun sa mga pamumuhay na mga tao, lalong-lalo na yung nasa labas ng social media. So, importante yung makapag-connect doon. Hindi lang sa pamamagitan ng mga local politicians, kundi sa pamamagitan ng mga volunteers at grassroots organizations. Salamat po.
Thank you so much to everyone on our panel. To end our Q&A session, we're going to be asking each of you to give your very brief parting words. Some of what you already said uh, sounded like parting words, but we wanted to give you that opportunity. Uh, we'll give you a moment to think about that as we flash, Muna, our Zoom panel evaluation poll on the screen. And this is for the participants uh, today. So please look at your screens very well. Uh, and please take a moment to answer a quick poll of just five questions to show our panel our very great appreciation. You know, they've graciously taken the time to stay with us for three hours. Uh, they have very, very hectic schedules, as you all know. So please uh, fill in the uh, questions. I won't read them anymore, ha? Medyo ubus ng oras natin. But like I said, no, um, ubus ang oras, gumampas na tayo ng oras. Pero I'm sure you all agree, this was a masterclass in Philippine politics. And, uh, uh, you know, it, this is something that uh, I'm sure many of you were very, very... Uh, uh, happy to be part of. So, parting words na tayo. So, let's begin with Attorney Tony Abad, sir. Attorney Tony Abad, you have to unmute yourself, sir. Okay. Yeah. Well, with respect to the first uh, question, strongly agree. Second question, also strongly agree the third question uh, spoke clearly uh, yeah i strongly agree and fourth the panelists used appropriate language yes i agree the panelists contributed to the perspective. Oh, yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Attorney Tony, so yung parting words po ninyo for the participants, for the audience? Uh, well, in so far as the audience is concerned, we have more than 300 participants. So, my goodness gracious. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't know that it was going to be this big. <laughs> In any case, at least uh, this particular program that was thought of is something that should be remembered for always. Because we learned a lot of things from what has already been said in connection with our election. Thank you very much for having this kind of a program. The University of the Philippines is really something that cannot be compelled to do anything except to do the best things in life. Thank you. Thank you very much, Attorney Tony Abad. Bumubuhos ang thank you. <laughs> dito sa, sa chat ng Zoom. Um, and well, like you said, Attorney Tony, no, goodness gracious, great box of fire. Meron pa talagang ganoon. Okay, uh, final words naman. Brief final words from JY De La Rosa. JY. Uh, hello po. Uh, thank you very much for having me today. Uh, siguro mga final words lang. E tatlo, magparehistro dahil extended ang ating registration, bumoto, at uh, more, most importantly, magpabakuna. Uh, doon sa mga kapwa ko bataan, laging sinasabi na tayo ang pag-asa ng bayan pero ilang salin lahi na yon ganito pa rin ang bayan natin. Kaya ngayon na 28 million strong tayo, 18 million ang rehistradong botanteng kabataan ng 2019 at tumaasang uh, tataas pa po ito in uh, 2022. Eh, mamili po tayo talaga ng kandidato na tunay na magre-represent sa atin dahil dapat ngayon ang kabataan ang tagapagtaguyod ng bayan. And lastly, on a personal note, not speaking in behalf of the senator. I hope everyone will be voting for someone who have utmost respect with human dignity and human rights. Dahil sa tingin ko ang mga kandidato na walang paggalang sa dignidad ng tao at karapatang pantao ay hindi po dapat iboto ng mga Pilipino. Maraming salamat po. Thank you so much, JY De La Rosa. Uh, bumubuhas pa rin. Umuulan ng uh, pasasalamat sa mga organizers at sa speakers uh, ng uh, uh, webinar na ito. Uh, Lito, Sir Lito Banayo, final brief final words from you. 
Thank you. Thank you, uh, Pia, and thank you to all the panelists. I learned a lot from this uh, encounter. But instead of giving final words, uh, baka ma-repeat ko lang yung sinabi ng iba, let me just address very briefly some issues. One, bakit ako na inappoint ni Presidente Duterte na chairman or de facto ambassador to Taiwan ay nakay isko? Well, I made this very clear to the President. Total, number one, Uh, six years without re-election ang presidente. So hanggang doon na lang ang aking serbisyo sa kanya. And I made it very clear. Number two, going back to Dr. Ron Mendoza's uh, statements and beliefs, which I also believe coming as I do from a region who, whose growth economic potential has been stunted by traditional dynasts. Sinabi ko rin kay Presidente Duterte na kung patatakbuhin mo ang anak mo, it will not fly because transposing a, a, a local dynasty into the national will not be acceptable to the people. So yun lang yung sinasabi na dahil lang dahil ako na kay isko eh, enabler uh, si ko uh, perish thought. No? I, I but isko as a humble person who went through the ranks, struggled in life, uh, has a vision for the country. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sir Lito Banayo. Thank you for those parting words and uh, uh, the additional information that you gave us. Uh, Attorney Barry Gutierrez. Uh, well, thank you, Pia, uh, for uh, hosting. And thank you for to the uh, Philippine Communication Society and TVUP for the invitation. Uh, I agree with uh, Dean Ron, yung sinabi niya kanina, and sinabi rin ni uh, Dr. Achenza uh, and some of our other panelists na this is going to be a historic election. It will be historic, though, not just for the stakes, uh, not just because it will determine probably uh, where we will be uh, in the next decade or maybe even longer, uh, but because it will really involve, I think, a clash between old ways of doing things in terms of uh, a campaign, old ways of doing things in terms of, uh, of the entire uh, entire perspective on politics, and newer, hopefully more hopeful, more participative ways of actually approaching the same thing. Uh, The VP Lenny has banked on the strength of a people's campaign, and I think that's been consistent with who she is, what her track record is. And we hope that uh, ultimately the, we will be proven uh, right uh, in that particular bet that we are uh, making. One last reminder before I, before I sign off. Political campaigns have this tendency to look at voters as you know, passive recipients of the content they produce, the messages uh, they churn out. It's a reminder lang, di ba? That when you're a voter, you are a Filipino, you are a participant in this important electoral exercise, you're not just a passive receiver of information. You're not just a consumer kung ano man, kung ano man, kung ano man ang nilalabas ng mga political campaigns. You are an agent yourself of change. You can be an active participant, an actor dito sa field na ito. And I think more than ever, in the kind of campaign we will be facing under the very challenging circumstances, that has to come to the fore. Kailangan nating lumabas, kailangan nating makinig, kailangan nating mag-aral, at kailangan nating kumilos para dun sa magiging outcome ng election na ito. And I reserve yung last thank you ko dun sa over 400 people who attended this webinar. I think that's an encouraging sign that people are invested in these elections. They want to learn more. They want to uh, to participate more actively. And uh, hopefully, masustain natin uh, moving forward. Thanks to all the other panelists. I learned so much from you. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Attorney Barry. Dr. Dennis Cornachon. Well, salamat po. Uh, kami po sa PPSA, uh, we are looking forward to having more uh, fruitful, fruitful engagements with the Philippine Communication Society and uh, the media practitioners as well as the uh, political strategists. Now, uh, a key takeaway, I think, in this uh, forum is that uh, it's very clear that uh, this, go this uh, election is going to give us a new experience. And... Uh, If, if there's anything, I think it could break, you know, it's capable of breaking the bar barriers that have been, uh, you know, set in place ever since by traditional politics. So this is a uh, liberating moment, I think, for, for the voters. Because uh, if, 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 if anything, I think this is the best chance for us uh, to, you know, to have an impact when it comes to uh, choosing or, you know, a, truly effective leaders. Ito to makapagbigay ng solusyon sa ating mga problema. Now, I do hope uh, na itong itong magiging resulta 
ng uh, 2022 elections ay eh, hindi siya mere expression of the or mere result of the best campaign strategies. Sana po ito ay maging expression, maging totoong expression ng uh, totoong hangarin ng mga tao, itinatawag na people's will. So yun lang po, maraming salamat. Thank you, Dr. Cornashon. Dean, Ronald Mendoza, sir. Thank you, Pia, and thank you to everyone. Uh, not to repeat myself from what I thought was the closing earlier, but I just want to reiterate uh, this election will be very crucial for our country, for our economy, and uh, I dare say for our democracy, uh, for the very reasons that many of us agreed, uh, agreed on already. It strikes me uh, on a personal note that uh, I actually like all the leaders represented uh, in this meeting today. And uh, in a better Philippines, a more, um, you know, a stronger democracy, they may even be part of one political party, uh, espousing very much the same values and the same policy reforms. Uh, if, if I'm just listening to what all three have been speaking about, no? human rights, uh, human development, uh, empowering the youth, uh, citizens engagement, uh, better governance, faster and more responsive governance, bilis kilos, all of these things are actually coherent. Uh, and it's unfortunate that uh, we are all uh, somehow forced back into values, not, not really the policies, but values of uh, what the leaders stand for. And, and I believe that's going to be part of the choice for 2022. It's not just that they listen to science and evidence-based policymaking. All three represented here seem to be very keen on that. But it's really going to be about values. Yung mga hindi represented dito sa forum today, Medyo yun ang medyo kailangan natin tanungin, ano bang values ang nire-represent mo kung you know, you're part of a fat dynasty, you're part of a history that is rife with corruption, uh, and so on and so forth. So, so I hope that's really what, uh, among the messages that we, we get to our uh, uh, voting population, especially since the young people will be a bigger and bigger share of our voting population this decade. Thank you again for the chance to join today. I learned so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Dean uh, Ron Mendoza. And um, you know, just to add to that, there's this very interesting comment on the chat uh, from Jerry, Jeremy Montibo, and I hope you don't mind my reading this. And he says, and I quote, we fight for different political colors, but this webinar unites us as one. Thank you all for. I, and uh, finally, Dr. Ella Atienza, final words from you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Pia. Two short um, uh, messages. Uh, number one, um, definitely COVID-19 is a big challenge uh, for all of us uh, in these elections, but it's also, again, uh, an important opportunity uh, because uh, for the first time, we see larger groups of people who are uh, speaking directly, uh, losing their patience kasi nasa, kumbaga, ramdam na ramdam, hindi lang yung pandemic, kundi yung epekto ng pandemic sa ekonomiya, sa mental health, at sa maraming bagay. So, in that sense, opportunity perhaps for a lot of us to, to push for better ways of conducting elections, pushing for electoral reforms, prioritizing citizens and voters as important, and transforming the way we look at citizen and uh, uh, government relations, not only during campaigns, not only during elections, but actually through the entire political process. Sabi ko nga kanina, political participation is not just uh, voting in elections. May marami pang feedback and communication mechanisms na importante sa atin. And uh, second, um, we should uh, thank you to all our organizers. Uh, I always learn uh, by being part of this. I'm able to actually uh, check the concepts and theories that I teach because I listen to practitioners. I validate my observations based on the experience of different practitioners. So I thank uh, the Philippines Communication Society and PBUP for this. We should have more of this and we should actually think of how we can popularize and share uh, what we're doing here, what we're discussing in different formats so that we can reach uh, people who are outside social media, perhaps translating this into different languages and maybe uh, transforming bits and pieces of this into podcasts and uh, uh, messages in radio and TV programs. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Dr. Atienza, uh, Ella Atienza. And, uh, you know, I, I wish we, there were so many ways uh, that we could say thank you. We can say thank you uh, by saying marami salamat, muchas gracias, merci beaucoup, etc. Et um, I know this is a very crucial time for all of you. Uh, and we do appreciate so much uh, uh, your wisdom and the energy you poured into all your presentations into this webinar today. Like I said, Karina, I, I call this a masterclass. Uh, it's so unique and it is, uh, it is uh, I think uh, for me, the best three hours of my time this week. No? And now we're sharing the evaluation poll results. Karina, we asked uh, participants to, to fill in uh, this evaluation poll. Uh, and of course, as we can see, a great percentage of our viewers uh, have given very high marks uh, to our panel, siyempre naman. Now, as mentioned earlier, we are launching our post-test. So you can assess your progress in knowledge and understanding acquired from this webinar. Itong uh, Mentimeter poll, um, uh, all right, <clears throat> Mentimeter poll, 93 pa rin ang uh, nagsasabing social media no, is their main source of information dahil nga uh, mag, uh, medyo kulang yung magiging face-to-face -face campaigning, primary source of information. Uh, and then followed but in by online media and traditional media as uh, as was the uh, trend earlier at the same time uh, ito lang ba yung, uh, and then uh, your word cloud can we show very quickly lang your word cloud natin yeah it's still the same uh, economy corruption education uh, followed closely uh, by public health pandemic uh, etc now uh, we're going to keep this post test open in the background uh, so that uh, we can proceed with our program well to close the program. Uh, it is now my distinct pleasure to uh, introduce to you the chairman of the National Forum on Communication and Democracy Series. He's also a board director of the Philippines Communication Society, an old friend and a frequent guest on uh, many of my shows uh, for so many years. Please welcome Dr. Dante Velasco. Thank you, Pia. Thank you for your <clears throat> superb handling as Moderator, <clears throat> I'll be very brief. Um, we have heard we have heard this. We have heard uh, six experts, and uh, as everybody has said, the this has been a very substantial, substantive cherry. Uh, <clears throat> and in summary, for example, we will. Uh, I I gathered some some impressions. The first one is. We will adjust. If not, we will master the pandemic during these elections. It is not a one-way game, the elections. According to Lito, this is very challenging. But according to Barry, social media is not the be-all or end-all in this campaign, but we need to sustain <clears throat> this conversation. Well, we started very well with Tony Abad saying that uh, the freedom of expression should not be restricted minimally. Another way of saying is it should not be, we should go on. The election should go on in spite of the pandemic. And <clears throat> we are expecting a high level of engagement. He also said something about the importance of this election. And then uh, Dr. Ella has emphasized, for example, that uh, elections build legitimacy. You know, this thing about legitimacy, we legitimate government, not by bullet, but by the ballot. So we need these elections. So this pandemic did not dampen the enthusiasm of people for elections, according to Dr. Ella. And Dr. Ron uh, introduced that people saying now, the elephant in the room is the pandemic. It has changed the way we live. Now it will change the way we vote. So uh, <clears throat> the elections will be, will change this country. According to Ron, election will be put to a test despite and not because of the pandemic. So these elections were moving through, as somebody has been said, this just said, this is historic and our democracy will be put to a test. 
It is good that these elections have not been postponed, that in the middle of this pandemic, the show must go on. And everybody is saying that we, this virtual campaign, I think it is Dr. Dennis who introduced the, the phrase, the virtual campaign in these elections will be the next battle zone. And so the battle will, will be won, how we will handle social media. And Dr. Dennis uh, gave a good comparison between the traditional and new methods in this campaign. Now, it is also said that public image is very important in these elections because there will be less house to house campaign, there will be less handshake. And so you go to social media for public image. Those of us in marketing and those of us in communication, this is what we call political branding. So we need, as everybody is saying, that we need maximum visibility. And <clears throat> we will convert likes or views or followers into votes. According to Dr. Kurashon, these are his memorable phrases. And then we are actually looking at forward to 80% voter turnout, which is the goal of the COMELEC. Now, uh, Barry and Lito, Barry Gutierrez and Lito and Elisa, we were together in Balacanang. So this is actually a forum among friends. And the three doctorate people, the two, three PhDs have given us a good uh, framework, theoretical, conceptual, and operational framework. Now the question, the first question asked by Pia, uh, posed to Barry, when, if Lenny wins, sabi ni Pia, will he be like Harry Roque? To which question Barry has immediately responded, I have no, I have no uh, ambition to be like Harry Rocky. That is a mouthful. He spoke volumes. I think they came from the same UP College of Law. Now how about unity talks? Uh, the unity talks between uh, Lenny Cubredo and Isco Moreno has, has bugged down. And so what comes next? It is good that the two, was the three, the three, Barry and uh, YJY and Lito are, we were together in Malacanang in that campaign by Pinoy. So <clears throat> the exchange was very friendly. After the, after the unity talks back down, everybody came, uh, everybody, a lady has moved forward to having her own campaign. The question is, will there be another unity talks? It looks like that is no longer a great prospect. After the announcement of Lenny, according to Barry, there was overwhelming response to the declaration or announcement of Lenny to go for the presidency. But Barry said it took us by surprise. It was by surprise. And then uh, Pia asked about the color pink. And uh, Barry, of course, gave an explanation why the color pink is uh, now almost universal. Of course, we knew beforehand that Isco Moreno, according to Lito, uh, has the color blue and white. Now, in, in terms of uh, the, the lots of volunteers, the task now, according to Barry, will be to sustain the vigorous response of the volunteers from multiple points of view to fuel the spontaneous campaign or response. Now, the turn of Lito came in and Lito has given us a picture of how a veteran political strategist he is. He was with the uh, <clears throat> ERAP, he was with Pinoy, and he was with everybody else. But he concluded that we should not rely on machinery. 
it has proven time and again that Masini alone will not win the election. And he told us that uh, the East Comoreno campaign is using science. They're using the survey and they're using FGD, so much like what we do at the UP MASCOM and the other MASCOM departments of the universities represented here. And uh, on the basis of those survey findings, on the basis of FGD findings, they craft their own messages and they craft their own strategies. Therefore, uh, Lito said that Isco is not crafting his campaign, not against someone or not against this or not against that, but it will be a fresh initiative from Isco Moreno who came from the masses who will address the concerns as they were revealed in the findings of the research instruments. And he explained also that uh, ISCO has, has chosen uh, Dr. Willie Ong because he has given the powerful signal that he is very much concerned with the healthcare needs of our people. Now, um, we, we heard uh, from YB or JY that first of all, uh, Grace Poe is not running for president but she, he, uh, he declined saying who Grace Poe will be supporting. So this is now a case where there are two spontaneous responses. There are different approaches. And it is good that they, they recognize the fact that these elections will be different. These elections will be challenging, but these elections also will be, as Dr. Ron said, will be historic and it will define our present and our future. And the parting words of uh, our people are very encouraging. Barry Gutierrez talk about fresh hope and the new terrain in the campaign, fresh approach, get out of the spiral of this uh, campaign when you're boxed into the vicious cycle of trolls and being controlled by new media, and then to harness the spirit of volunteerism. In the case of Lito, they are saying that he's saying that this is a new approach. Uh, Isco Moreno represents a new approach to the campaign and uh, his record in as, vice, as mayor of Manila will be shown also and be demonstrated in the next one, in the next uh, leadership challenge. This is good that the contest is friendly. As uh, attorney Tony Abata said, there was no argument, there was no quarrel. This is a contest among friends. And then everybody has shown the value of these elections, that it will, it will legitimate uh, the leaders that will come in, not by the bullet, but by the ballot, and then we can move forward. The Philippine Communication Society, led by our VP Nelly Bernia, and directed this this, this uh, presentation is directed by Gigi Alfonso. We are we have mounted these seminars on the theme communications and democracy. By what we have right now. It looks like democracy will be in good hands. And so may I, may I thank everyone. May I thank once again Pia for that superb uh, handling of this moderation and moderate chat. And then we would like, we'd like to look forward to your TV program on politics as usual. Well. We would like to thank our team here. And we'd like to thank all the participants that have made this a very successful uh, webinar. And may I say, because of this, all is well for democracy in the Philippines. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sobrang salamat po, Dr. Dante Velasco, for that on-point synthesis. And the only thing to add is amen. So we're now going to share oh, wow. <laughs> the test results for our viewers. And as you can see in your screens, so there is this... Uh, 
distinct increase in knowledge and understanding of the issues based on these post-test results. Those who have actively participated will uh, get the most out of this interactive program. Like we said, this webinar is uh, a part of a series of the National Forum on Communication and Democracy, Philippine Elections 2022. PCS will have a webinar every second Wednesday of the month until May next year. So please pencil that in to your calendars. Next month, we're gonna be featuring Truth in Political PR and Advertising with Christian Ian Esguera of ANC, a colleague of mine in journalism, as your host and moderator. So please stay tuned for updates in the PCS website or Facebook page. Now this formally, of course, closes the third National Forum on Communication and Democracy, Philippine Elections 2022. We look forward to your company again every second Wednesday of the month. Like we said, 9 to 11 a.m. Well, actually, sumobra na tayo sa 11. Um, dahil nga, sabi ko, no, masterclass ito. Um, however, uh, just a little bit of a reminder, no? if you have not done so yet, please, please, emphasis on please, para na akong plaka, please register to vote. No more excuses. Ha? Na extend na siya ng one month. At, uh, uh, you know, and, and by the way, no, taas na nga ng kamay. Meron pa bang hindi registrado dito sa forum, sa mga bata dito? Siguro naman registrado na kayo lahat at kung hindi pa, no, please remember, ang social media ay hindi polling precinct. At bukod sa tanong na registrado na ba kayo, bakunado din po ba kayo? Uh, we have this uh, little public service announcement lang po, just to remind you about the importance of vaccination. Please roll. Oh, po. Mukhang malalim yung iniisip mo, ha? Wala ka magpasok ngayon? Wala po. May disinfection kasi sa grocery. Ah, ganun ba? Eh di ba wala rin kayong pasok kahapon? Pati nung isang araw? Sana makabalik na ako sa trabaho. O, oh, Sasha. Hindi na muna kita istorbuhin at mukhang ang malalim yung iniisig mo. Hello? Oo oh, na. No. Magpabakuna na kaya tayo? Ah! Walang problema po. Parang nahan mo lang ako eh. Talaga. Dahil mahal ko kayo, Magpapabakuna ako. The future, uh, especially the next uh, six years, is in both your arm, kung saan kayo magpapabakuna, and in your hands. You need your hands to vote, whether you're going to write it in a ballot or uh, key in your, your uh, vote in uh, the elections in May 2022. After all, don't we all love the same country? I'm uh, Pia Ontiveros. I was so honored to be part of this. On behalf of the Philippines Communication Society, let's strengthen our country's democratic foundations, our country's democracy through communications. Enjoy the rest of your week. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs>